This is May, tw May 27th, 2019, just doing an introduction of cash flow uh, to really get the team to understand cash flow. Uh, because our whole focus here at Make Your Mark is to have our team really organized around cash flow. Your know, mindset's great, but here's a challenging part. You have the best mindset in the world, you have no direction what do you do with the best mindset. Nothing. But my mindset's great, yeah, but where do you go next? I have no idea. So for me, it's really giving people the rails to run on. Like mindset is a big part of what we do. And as we go through today, I want you to ask, ask any questions. I'm just giving all of you an overview of this. You can use this in your personal life. If your financial situation is not great, use a cash flow. I'll tell you exactly where your money is. You know, really, really important. So this, the, the take the value of what you're going to get today, you know, use it in your, well, use it here to make your mark, we use it with our students. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about it as we go through. Now, for some of you, you might be like, ah, oh, cash flow money, what have you. Remember, your energy. You think, ah, oh, guess where money is probably in your life. Probably not most abundant. Because, you know, at the end of the day, it's a challenging part for a number of our business owners. The biggest reason why I'm doing this training and getting us really focused on this is because most of our students are cash flow challenged. Mm -hmm. That's their biggest challenge. And most of the business owners, you know, are cash flow challenged in some way or form. So it's really looking at how we how we look at this, I look at it pretty much daily at Make Your Mark. I spend time on it on the weekend as well for Make Your Mark. We look at our cash flow, where things are at as well. Because, you know, it's without numbers, you're just running in the dark. You know, and a lot of people are like, I feel you should do this, I feel you should do that. I don't give out feelings, I care about facts. What cash flow does for us is give us fact, okay? And as we go through this, please do your best to stay with me. If you're not with me, just, Colin, I'm not with you. Like, I don't expect everyone to fully understand this stuff. My goal is by the end of this to have a better understanding from where you're at right now. Okay, really, really important. So, um, one of the key pieces for me is really getting you to understand. So, let's just go around the table really quickly. What do you understand by cash flow? Forget what's on the screen. The screen is useless for now. What, what's, what do you understand by cash flow? More coming in than going out. More coming in than going out? Okay. The flow of it. The flow of it. What's left over after everything's said and done? What's, every, what's left after everything's said and done? Okay. Really, in a day, what you spend, you bring more in than what you spend. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so the same thing in your personal life. You know, the biggest thing in cash flow in anyone's personal life is you go to Starbucks, you buy food, you buy a coffee, a five buck coffee. It wasn't a five buck coffee; it was a seven buck coffee. You had to earn seven bucks, pay two bucks in tax to get your five bucks to buy your coffee. It isn't a perfectly for all of you. Your car payment's not a three hundred dollar a month car payment; it's probably a four hundred dollar a month car payment. You had to earn four hundred bucks. Pay 100 bucks to the government, left with 300 bucks that you now pay your car payment with. See, James, if that's a big epiphany. I teach my daughters that. It's not a $50 t shirt they're buying. For them, they pay less taxes from the tax bracket they're in, but it's probably a $60 t shirt. You know, this stuff is so important in your personal life as well as your. You know, most people, well, this is what I take home. No, you worked many hours. Most of us work until August for the government and then we make money. Yeah, you've probably heard that statement before. So, it's really important to get your money working for you and for us to get our business owners' money working. So, I'm gonna take you through a process here just so you can watch this for a second. In fact, you know what, let's just... Um, so it says a card or something put in front for that to just... Just that. This one, okay. So, if you look at... This is on the screen there, yeah? Can we see? Okay. So, if we took a cash flow, In a business, there's very simple things, okay? Very, very simple things. There's revenue or income. Very straightforward, okay? So there's number one, there's revenue, income. There's number two, you might have heard some of this terminology. And what my goal, here's the thing, so let's understand this. My goal is not to turn you all into like cash flow gurus. I've been doing this for a long, long time. Like I understand the stuff, but I can do my eyes closed just about. But the key piece is this thing here called, let's write it out. Or often called COGS. Oh, yeah. Okay, cost of goods or COGS. Okay. But it's just we can careful of birds. Mm. I might be okay. Start to smell smoky. Because <laughs> the lens got super hot lens. There's cost of goods, so and I'll come to you in a moment. Then there's expenses or sometimes called 
overhead, then what you're finally left with the second thing. Profit. <coughs> So let me give you some formulas here. I'm going to stick this up as we go around so that just keep everything visible. So very simple in a business. There's only a few things you can do if you, if you think of it. So the revenue, so it's, it's a very simple. Let's just use this marker. Everyone with me on this? So let's just say a marker. The revenue, let's just say we sell this marker for, two, let's say we buy it from somebody. So we buy the marker for 15 bucks. What does that give the company we buy it from? $15 worth of revenue. Revenue, okay. Well, let, I'll just use this to make your mark. So we, we, we sell this, it's $15, so, um, let's put here. so it brings in $15 worth of revenue for make your mark, okay. But then our cost of goods is five bucks. So we go to a supplier down the road, we buy this for five dollars, we come back here, we sell it to our clients for fifteen dollars. That leaves us what they call, now this is going to get you a little bit thinking here. A gross profit of how much? Ten, ten, ten. ten bucks. Our cost of goods, I mean, I tend to do a little bit here in, in, a, in a bunch of time, in a short amount of time. So, your cost of goods are anything, so this is, put it another color. Time and materials directly related to this marker. Everyone with me on that? So this marker costs five bucks. So what, what's it? The five bucks worth of materials are in here. And if it was a human being involved, their cost would be to make manufacture this marker. So labor cost, rent, hydro, all that kind of stuff. No, no, no. Directly related to the marker. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Directly related to the marker. So I want you to, to start to just think about this, okay? So this is directly related to the marker is the five bucks. That gives us a gross profit of 10. Then we have, which gives us a gross profit in, this, in the same, hopefully I'll run those news on this. So gross margin is just the same thing. What percentage, what, of, of the profit you make, the profit of the um, revenues, gross profit is 10 bucks. Of the fifteen dollars, so what percentage is that? Two thirds. Sixty-six. Is our gross margin? And this, this is probably the most important number in any cash flow in a business. Because here's why, and I'm going to get some discussion going around this afterwards. So then after that we have. So from this, so what does it leave us? So let's just say, so we, we sell this for 15 bucks. We, we pay the supplier five, we left with 10. That 10 bucks, so this 10 bucks here, goes to pay expenses or overhead. Hydro, gas, office, staff in the office, whatever it might be. And then, very simply, if I take all of this, put it up on the screen as well. Here's the formula. So if we take revenue minus cost of goods minus uh, expenses, Is equal to profit actually or net profit. I'm not going to get to too many terminology, too much terminology. So if you think of this, profit comes after 
we've paid the suppliers and the, the cost of the materials, we've paid all our expenses, we're left with profit. Andrew? Are you going to talk about how to calculate that? Is this a product-based business model? How do we calculate that for a service-based model where there isn't a strict? Um, for now, I'm not, yeah, for me, the, the easiest, so in a, in a it, this is really, uh, for sure, a product-based model. In a service-based, the easiest thing to do, revenue minus, minus all your costs. Because your gross margin in a, you know, this is a, this is a really good gross margin. 66% yeah. is a, has a healthy That's gross good. margin. You know, for many companies, if you go, we have, we have students that have a gross margin of 8%. And then they still have to take all the expenses from that 8% and they're left with whatever their net profit, their net profit is. You know, we have some. We have one client who's at two percent, one point eight percent, is their net profit. That's why you have to be crazy to open a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't realize it. You know, yeah. like there's certain there's certain math in restaurants. If you don't follow the math on percentages, you're dead. You know, so very quickly. So this is this gives you this is a very simple. This would be this is put in different color. This would be for a product. Then there's a service. In a service, I would keep it very simple. Give me a minus total expenses equals so what's going to keep it very simple. So, when you look at a business, it's not rocket science. So if you take these items here, how do you increase this item? Sell more. Increase. Sell more is one, number one. What else? Decrease cost. Yeah. Decrease, co decrease cost of goods. Can I get the cost of this market down to $4? Ask the supplier. Maybe I could buy more volume, whatever it might be, okay? Or reduce expenses. Do, you know, what, you know, do I need office space? Do I need you know, more materials? How much is our shipping? Get our shipping costs down. Get our anything. Get our hydro down. Whatever it might be. Um, hydro is not a great example because no matter what you do, you pay it. But the key pieces are, that's the only thing. This is all cash flow. That's the only thing you can do in cash flow. How can we increase the client's revenue? How do we decrease their cost of goods, if they have cost of goods? The expenses. So that's why you'll hear me say a lot of times when it comes to, comes to cost of goods, you know, a lot of people buy a lot of stocks that's in the shelf for, for ages and does nothing. And that's very expensive. Why? Because it just ties up your money. It just ties up your money in stock. So I want you to start to really think about when we're on a, when we're on a phone with a student, this is the number one reason why they drop out of a program. They're not making money. The biggest part is they don't understand some of the basics even our students, which is simply this. If they're a product-based company, they don't realize there's costs. They're like, no, I have, let's, say, let's just say they say, I have $15 worth of rent. Well, I bring in $15, I pay my rent. No, but you just have to pay the supplier five bucks. Well, now I'm negative five dollars. You know, so you have to bring in, for this, for this specific one, if your rent was 15 bucks and your profit's 10, you'd have to sell two of these markers Make sure you can pay your rent. You with me on that? Mm -hmm. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know there's a bunch of math. I mean, this is the stuff I love. Because without it, if you don't know your numbers, how do you run it? I mean, every all our um, team leads here should understand cash flow. If you understand cash flow. How do you run it? How do you ever run your area of the company? Because cash flow is one of the most important pieces. You know, every area has here's my revenue. These are the cost of goods. Maybe if there is one, it might be down here more so. But let's say cost of goods, like Facebook ads, for marketing, there's revenue minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit. Because our Facebook ads is a cost that's directly related to bringing people into events. So the key part to this is, I mean, this is super simple. I mean, there's lots of detail in a lot of what goes on. But what I want you to think about is when a client phones in and we have. Majority of the reason why they drop out of the program, cash. I'm not making money. So we have to help them on the phone to understand. I mean, some of you 
This is not for everyone. I just want you to get this. It's even the same in your personal life. You got money coming in from salary after 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 taxes. Okay. Your cost of goods. You know, we you don't normally have cost of goods, but you have a bunch of expense in your personal life. The way you the way you increase your profit in your personal life, either decrease expenses or increase income. Most people want to increase income, and as they increase income, what do they do with the expenses? Increase their they increase their expenses. They increase the expenses. They get no profit. No wonder why they're broke. You know, most people out or do not live in the, in the within the means of what they should be. Every time they get more money, they, they spend more money. That's the biggest challenge. Even with me. So this stuff works in your personal life, or it works in business as well. The biggest part is understanding the numbers. So let me give you an example of. I'll come back to a profit-based business for now, and then I'll come and I'll talk a little bit about later about back to a service. This makes this simple, simple enough for everyone. Mm -hmm. I don't expect everyone like someone on the phone. I'm going to do a couple of phone calls today with clients, and you can hear. What do you think? So from what we do at Make Your Mark, and many of you have been through some of the programs with me, and you maybe been in the back of the room with some of the programs, what have you, is what what can what can our clients do to increase revenue? More sales. More sales. What else? Raise their price. Raise their prices. What else? Because most of them are undercharging for what they're worth. Guarantee you that. So they can raise their prices. What else? What what impacts making sales? Get more clients. Okay, well that that's get more clients. What 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 allows us to get more clients? Networking. Networking. Like, are you going to go out and network? Key thing for today on the phone with is it air conditioner? on? It's mm -hmm. speaking on um, Is can we, um, like with Troy on the phone today, mm -hmm. Troy, number one, you need to increase your revenue, yes? What are you doing? I'm sitting in my store waiting for people. Troy, can you go networking? Yeah, go to the right networking groups where people have the money to buy his high-end lingerie. He has a challenge with his lingerie store in the sense that he has lingerie and sex toys together. The high-end lingerie lady is not going to go near a sex toy It looks store. like he has lingerie sex toys and boudoir photography. Boudoir photography is fine because high-end people are okay with that. Like, if, if he was local, let me give you an example. If he was local, Gabby would never go in his store. Oh, yeah. She wouldn't mind going in the store if it was only lingerie. Yeah. But going to a store that's full of sex toys and you come out and you meet somebody, the first thing I think that they'll think about, not the lingerie you're buying, but what toys are you buying. It's weird. You know, it just does happen. So, um, so for him, is he raising? So he could, he could raise his prices, go networking. What else could he do? How do you find more customers? Social media. Social media. I mean, I wonder how Attention. many stores he has. Because when I was looking at him, only one now. I think, ooh, I'm not sure. Because there's reference online that he had two at one point, maybe three at one point. He might be just down to one. I'm not sure. That's brutal, man. Um, I mean, it, like if he's, he could brutal. either maybe do a smaller storefront, maybe have a larger storage warehouse if he's like doing the whole sex toys, selling that online, and keep the lingerie maybe in the store. Or maybe put all the sex toys online and be done. Yes. You know? So, so he has a challenge right now where he has the, the two kind of very mixed messages. Oh, the two very different markets. Very, oh my God, yeah. and I'm not saying anything's wrong with sex toys. You enjoy sex toys, whatever, it's your choice. But the key the person buying high end laundry does not go anywhere near a sex toy store. The person buying sex toys, whatever, do they buy high end laundry? They might do. But really, some people don't care. Yeah. But that's okay. But the majority of the market care. Yeah. The buy high end laundry. So that's what he could do. He could um, he could do Facebook ads, he could do a number of different things. His biggest thing up here, the challenge why is his his revenues challenge, he has a mixed message in his store. You know, so that's going to be part of the discussion with him today. He'd be like, well, what do I do? Well, now he's got to a stage probably where he has no money. Yeah. So now marketing-wise, mm -hmm. there's a thing called guerrilla marketing, which is doing marketing with no budget. There's only two things you can do in life. Either spend money or spend your time. He has no option but to spend time. That's what guerrilla marketing strategies are. How can I do marketing with no money? So he has, he has an option now to do guerrilla marketing strategies. Dropping out of the program is not going to help him. In fact, what could he do? He could go online, watch sales warrior. He could go online, watch marketing warrior. Like, what are you doing to, to create the right message for your store? Social sales media, warrior would be really good. I just finished that over the weekend, and you have that really good exercise about um, determining your value, like going through that oh, exercise, right? Yeah. So that's so that's what he could do. The other thing he could do to get remember we focus on this one. He could reduce his cost of goods. How do I get the amount of this here? 
unfortunately, with lots of people, is you get your cost of goods down. So what, whatever he's buying his lingerie for, sex toys for, whatever. The challenge part is, I guarantee you, there's too many. Mm. He's too many me. lines, too many mm. whatever. Oh, but I need all that stuff. Mm. No, you don't need all that stuff. You know, you know, the problem is the more you buy, you, know, you, you might have seen in the restaurant industry, there's certain restaurants that get away with this, uh, that account to this. There's a very set reason for it. The average, the best restaurants in the world, by far, have the smallest menus. Mm -hmm. Except for chain stores. And the most, uh, most empty fridges. Less right. product. Yes, that's true. Yeah. And then, unless they're a, a Boston Pizza or a Cactus Club where they're buying power right. and they can buy centrally and then ship to all their stores. Then they're buying power, very different story. So he, he, he could get his cost of goods down. It's probably his variety of products is too vast. If he already has all that stock, he should become an Amazon reseller. He could become an Amazon reseller. Yeah, the pro problem is there, how much time are you going to spend there when your store is, he has, a, he has, he has what, his challenge right now, he has a noose around his neck. It's called rent. Yeah. You know, and he's afraid he can't get out of his lease. We'll, let, we'll chat about that in the phone when we phone him today as well. So this is where he's stuck. So he's between a rock and a hard place. Everyone with me on this? Is anyone, anyone following me? It's pretty interesting stuff, okay? So let's get another client. Give me another client. Is it Robin T. who just asked the right avatar? Uh, I'm not She's graduating. No, no, but she's giving out books. It's like she's upset with us at Make Your Mark because we are vetting her people she's yeah, sending yeah. in. We're telling her they're not the right quality. But the, here's the challenge part. So what I do with a person like Robin, and this is the challenge. No, can we make an exception? Oh, no, it's not that bullshit. There's no exceptions. Our rule is after the 31st of May, those books are gone. And only the quality people can. This is what I would say to Robin on the phone directly. Robin, so... We are vetting the people. Why? Because we're looking for a certain avatar. Who's your avatar that you're looking for? I'm looking for this, this, and this, and this. I'm going to send you four people who don't fit that avatar. You're okay with that? It will make a click so quickly. You're like, you know what? You're right. That's what I would do. Jamie, does that sound familiar? No, no, no. That's I'm actually puzzled as to why example. See, that's what I would do. Exactly Every single thing with a client, push it back to our trainings. You know, for me, no, we don't shift things for people. No, break the rules or whatever. That's just weak. We are not meant to be a weak company. People come to us for accountability. So, Robin, who's, well, firstly, I'll probably get on the phone and say, hey, Robin, how's it going, blah, blah, blah. Colin, I'm upset about the books. Before we discuss that, who's your avatar? Who are you looking for? I'm not really that sure, Colin. So, if I just sent you people and they couldn't afford your services, would you be okay with that? It's like, no, it's a waste of my time, Colin. Well, Robin, we're only asking for the same. She's fucked now, to be honest. How can she tell you no? Give me free tickets. You know, I'm so done with people that want stuff for free. I mean, I, I, I approach it with Sylvia in Toronto. I said, Sylvia, the people you're sending us, those five people that are coming out this week or next week in Toronto, Sylvia, are they going to be buying customers? Or oh, Colin, they're financially challenged. I'm like, so why are you sending them to us? Well, the program is great. Yeah. So is ice cream, but you don't get it for free. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, seriously. And, I, and she was like, wow, I'm like, it's not going to make you any money. You know, maybe you can help your team or whatever a little bit, but that's not helping us. It doesn't help make your mark, it doesn't help you get the, in the program. You know, it helps people, you know, come and just have a great time. And, you know, and she's like, okay, I'm with you on that. So I said to her, please make sure. I phone them and say, you know, Colin's ready about you being part of the program. I'm okay with asking for that. I am so done with people that are looky-loose, you know. Really, really important. So always, any client, be pushing them back to the training. So we have the online academy for a reason, Entrepreneur Academy. And so for sure, there's a mindset component to it, Kieran. Mm -hmm. There's a big part to mindset. But mindset without act, without direction is useless. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is. I mean, I've, we saw it with companies that I've watched for years that are, have been in the personal growth space. They get people all riled up and super excited. And then the people stand there like deer in the headlights. What do I do next? I've got all this excitement, all this amazing energy and this pure, this amazing mindset, what do I do next? What, because people don't know what they don't know. You know, so for me it's getting people ready to think about how do we increase income, how do they reduce their cost of goods, and then for Troy, Troy, have you taken your cost of goods, so your expenses, every one of them, and looked at every single one of them? Can you get your cell phone cost down? Can you get your 
rent down? Have you found your landlord and said, hey, things are a little bit tight right now, I can have two or three months reduction in rent? I've never thought about that. He won't do it. Have you phoned? No. Well, then do it. Have you phoned your credit card company and asked them to reduce your interest rate on your credit card? No. Do it. Like all this stuff. Next thing, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 500 bucks a month gets freed up. He goes, take that money, go do marketing, and increase his revenue. You'll see this on a call today. Like, I am so done with people dropping out of the program because we, you know, for me as an owner, is it allows, we allow them to drop out because they're in a financial challenge. That's not acceptable. We should be saying, how do we help them? Hence this meeting. Everyone with me on that? Let's help these people. You know, it's like, it's like having your friend who's got cancer and he's like, oh, I've got, yeah, I've got cancer. Great, we'll figure out die. As opposed to, hey, I know someone who's got a solution. Let's, let's figure out a way. I've got some, I'll search you online. I found some health remedies for you. Let me help you. We cannot allow people to disengage and be okay with it. Everyone with me on that? You know, our thing is like, really, I've really worked with uh, Gabby and Donna on this to put a PIF process in place you know, for the people who are paid in full. I don't want them phoning us. We should be in touch with them. You know, after social media was it last week, phone the PIFs. How did your course go? Did you get, you know, not did you get value, you should never ask that question. It's like, how, what's, what are your biggest nuggets? What are you going to use from the course? What's your strategy? I'm doing this, I'm doing that, great, let's go. You know. As a, and those PIFs have a special strategy. Why? We have a process in place for them because I don't want them ever to phone the office again. I want them to phone the office. We're excited because the program is, they're crushing the program. You know, and there's a number of key things we'll, we'll be shifting in the next while as well, the next three, six months, around really improving, continually improving the program. Because remember, as we sit in this room all together, is whatever our students say about me, the company, whatever, it's our reputation. You know, so it's our goal to look after the clients, help them with their cash flow. So anything. So what? Are, what are the? So let's just get to a whole list of different things. What goes into overhead or expenses? Staff costs. So staff. Rent. Hydro. Let's get people to write them down. Rent. Hydro. Phones. Phones. Cell phones. Electricity. Merchant fees. Mm -hmm. The credit card fees. We spend four, or five grand a month on credit card fees. Wine budget. <laughs> <laughs> food and beverage, yeah. Yeah, food and beverage, like entertainment. Entertainment, absolutely. Supplies, binders, etc. No, it's so supplies and binders, will that go in cost? No, that, that, that's expensive. That's expensive. Yeah, we, we make your mark. You have to be very careful. Like, yeah. You can say, we, 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 we both, these, we do have a, we do have a cost of goods. Like when we go to Business Mastery, some of you operate on notice. What do you, now those are no, don't, don't answer. What do you think our cost is for every person sitting in the room at Business Mastery? Outside of the event cost, just materials in the room. Easily a couple hundred. No, 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 just in terms of stuff we hand out at the event, oh. about 30 bucks yeah. a person. Binders, arrows, arrows are like four bucks an arrow. Mm -hmm. you know, binders, arrows, Inserts. journals, handouts, Dream booklets, you know, markers that we use there, all that kind of stuff. And adds up. So when we had 100 people in a room and 20 people were buying, 80 people were 80 times 30 bucks. We were spending 2,400 bucks on those people with no return on revenue or investment. So now we have, let's say, 50 in a room finished with 20 to 25 people buying. Well, now our cost is only 25 people times 30 bucks. So in the day it's yeah seven hundred and forty, yeah seven fifty. All right, yeah. So it's just super interesting to, to start to look at these pieces. You know, not, I don't want to make. I mean, part of this is I don't want to get too far in, into the depths of this because otherwise I could sink a boat here. Because um, this there's n numbers of what run a business, but the key pieces. So there's other, you know, cost of goods. You know, Cost of goods, can, remember the piece up there, it says time and materials. So if, I am, if I'm a person making these coffee cups, and let's just say these are handmade coffee cups, and my salary is five grand a month making coffee cups, then the materials and my salary to make this coffee cup are cost of goods. Mm. Everyone with me on that? The person doing the invoicing, the person doing the data entry, what have you, expenses. 
because no, that, no, that person doing data entry is not directly related to manufacturing the product. Everyone with me on that? So it's always time and materials. So some, some team members, so if you look at make your mark, where would Gabby be? Cost of goods or expenses? Expenses. Expenses. Where would Andrew be? Cost of goods. Andrew, Heather, Mo, cost of goods. Cheryl? I'd say they're uh, probably half half around some of the stuff. You know, um, anything, you know, so for me, it's, you, know, you start to realize each person here, Penny, uh, Erica, expenses. You know, it's not cost of goods, it's not. Certain part of it, though, for setting up the room, certain part of your salary, so a percentage of your salary would go to cost of goods for doing room setup for each of the events that are local. So it'd be 50 50, right? May not be 50 50, it might be 20% of her time is doing that or 10%, and the rest is in the yeah, office. Yeah, 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 that's true. So it can be a split. So it can be a split. So this stuff's super interesting. Let me show you something here. That will be, this this what blows people's minds. So just so you know, it's not only this for service. You can have. I'll, I'll, let me do a make your mark example. I think it might be better. Let's take MIM as an example, because it'll give you... So let's just say, and I'll make up all these numbers. Um, so let's just say we go, to, we go to an event, and let's just say we're doing Sales Warrior. What's the revenue from per day that we bring in for a course? The approximate per student. For, for as part of their package, a sugar package. Give me a guess. Don't. I'm not going to hold you to it. Ten thousand. No, no, no. Not per kid. Not per student. Oh. Um. Six hundred dollars a day. Uh, oh uh, no, it's about yeah, it's about quarter to hundred bucks. Seven hundred bucks a day. Per student? Per per student? That right. That's absolutely wrong. No. Right. Honey, they're only paying a 700 bucks per month payment. Mm -hmm. If they go to sales where it means you break even. Broken up. Well, well, how many days? Okay, I'll, 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 I can do it in my head. It, so, it depends if they need to. If they can't go business. But it's not 700 bucks a day. Mm -hmm. That's maybe including the, like, I'm talking about what the student, so what does that cost for a student to be in that room? Okay, that, okay, so I can see what they pay. No, no, what they pay is what is what. Ah, okay. So let's just say, let's just say we have, we'll make it easier. Let's just say we have 50 students coming into an event. So those students have all paid, let's just call it one single event. Let's say they've all paid $1,000. Mm -hmm. Everyone with me on that? So what do we bring in revenue wise? 50 grand. Okay. They go to this event. Let's just make it a bit of fun. We call this a, let's just call it business excellence. Business excellence, we have you know, the cost of goods, so time and materials. So let's say the materials for business excellence, the room cost, so the room is part of the cost. So room cost, everything else for business excellence is. And let's say, let's say that it's a 30,000 30, 30, cost of everything else. And then the people at the event, putting the event together. So our team that's at Business Excellence, what have you, let's say it's $10,000 worth of team time. You know, you know, for Penny and Erica way before the event, and then at the event, putting the whole event together. So let's just say this is 40 grand. That gives us a gross profit of? $10,000. What's my gross margin? So gross your so it's ten grand over the fifty grand. So that's our gross margin for business excellence. Just make up you're making these numbers up, I mean that's some of these numbers. Some are accurate enough, but some are not. Then from that, we have all the 
the expenses back to the office. So let's say the back of the office, the expenses here for that event, put it together, or 5,000, what it leaves us with, 5,000 net profit. So we know that for every dollar, watch, and watch how this works, for every dollar we spend, because this is 20%, so if we, for every dollar we bring in, we only get 20 cents of profit, because the other 80 cents is going to pay the cost of goods. Everyone with me on that? So we only have 20 cents. So when we say business excellence, let's just say an example, let's, um, Let's get another entertainer for $1,000. Well, we have to pay $1,000 out of gross profit. So let's say that entertainer is 1000 What revenue do we have to bring in to pay that $1,000 person? Five. $5,000 in more revenue to pay the $1,000 person. Am I with you on this? So this is where it gets really interesting for people because when you start to think of this, you start to realize this number is the most important number all financials is the 20 percent is your gross margin which is this number here I want you to think about it because so think of think of this so let's take let's just take a an example of this with um, So let's just say that, that let's just say the gross let's say the gross margin at Make Your Mark is twenty percent, which thank God it's not. <laughs> thank God. Um, if, if the gross margin is twenty percent, then for every one dollar you spend, you need to make. Five dollars. That makes sense for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want you all to realise this. Even our team leads in the office. Okay. So when the team lead comes to me and says, "Colin, I want to hire a new person at three grand a month." It's only three grand, Colin. That's a, that's a good person, three grand. The buy to buy. We have to earn, we have to make $15,000 just to make, just so we can pay that person. Anyone with me on this? It's fascinating. So what this is there for, this is for break even. So, we bring in 15 grand because out of the 15,000, uh, you know, 80% of that goes to cost of goods. It leaves us with 20%. That 20% leaves us with three grand to pay that person. We've only broken even. Make your mark hasn't made a dollar yet on that 15 grand. Zero. In that month. Whatever it is. Yeah. In period. Well, that person has to bring in 15 grand a month. month. Exactly. That's what we have to bring in 15 grand a month to pay that person. You know, so watch how this works. So we'll let you write the numbers down. And please, if there are any questions that come up, this this number is one of the most critical. Like I say, most critical numbers. Because now you take this and you look at. Because remember, you take your gross margin or your gross pro, your gross margin. You're with your gross margin or the gross profit, you pay your expenses. You have no gross profit, how do you pay your expenses? You know. So for me, it's. Really important to think about this. Think about companies that are out there. So we had, there's a jeweler just down the road, this way, just down the road here, uh, Jose Jewelers, just a couple of doors down. Okay, I used, to, I used to be work with Jose, and eventually I stopped working with him because honestly, some people are not coachable. So one of the key things with Jose, 
His gross margin. I mean, my wife can't be. 25%. So he comes to me and he says, Colin, I'm going to do, a, I'm gonna, this is 1 December, I'm going to do an advertising campaign. It's going to cost me about $15,000 for this ad campaign. So the ad campaign of 15 grand. And he said to me, and I'm sure I'll, just, I'll, I'll bring in 15 grand and I'll break even. I said to him, Jose, you need to bring 15 grand divided by the 0.25 just to break even. He hasn't even made a dollar yet at 60 grand. That's why I stopped working with him. Because he said, I'm doing it anyway, I don't care. Guess how much he made from the ad campaign? 15 grand. He made 40 grand. Mm -hmm. He didn't make 40 grand. He brought in 40 grand's worth of revenue. He didn't even pay for his co he didn't even pay for his ad campaign. Anyone with you on that? It's fascinating. So this is the kind of stuff that people are fascinated. You know, he's like, I bought in 40 grand. I said, yeah, but you you didn't even cover your ex you, that one you covered the campaign, but you never covered your expenses. You got broke so quickly that way, and that's what happened to him. So it didn't happen to him. He had to downsize his store. Because he didn't get the ROI. He had to make 60 grand to break even. You know, because remember, he bought in he bought in 40 grand. Of the 40 grand, how much was gross profit? 20, uh, 25% of that. 25% of that. So 10 grand. 10 grand. grand. What is his cost for his campaign? Negative five. Is negative five. People don't think this way. He's like, but I bought in 40. Yeah, but you're negative five. What do you mean I'm negative five? I bought in 40. Clueless. Anyone with me on this? So this is the stuff that when we talk about, so when we talk about you know, things in a person's business, how they improve cash flow, it's not, one of the most important things is this number. Because watch here. If we took that number and we said, let's just say your gross margin was 20%, 30%, 50 percent that's what the numbers are, yeah, and 70%. Let's just say you had an expense of a team member that was four grand, whatever, four grand, as a team member. At 20%, how much do you have to bring in to pay that four grand? Yeah, 16. Five times. So five, 20. 20. That's a pretty low gross margin. At 30%? We're talking about break evens, right? Yeah. 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 On that salary. I'm bringing in 30%? So it's about 12, five, somewhere out there. Fifty percent. I need to bring in eight. So I want to bring in eight thousand dollars of the revenue. I make fifty percent gross profit. Therefore, I can pay that person the four grand. And at seventy percent, I don't know what that would be. Sixty-eight hundred. Yeah, it's So you look at this, the higher your gross margin, the less revenue you have to bring in to break even on your expenses. So this number, the higher this is, the better for your business. We have some clients, but just think about this. So we have one client who's at, do the math. So, 44,000 divided by 40, 8. 40, 48,000? 48, 48. 
No, you're right, 48. That person has to bring in 48K just to break even on that four grand salary. We have one lady that uh, she runs a travel business, and this is where gross margins at. You remember her? Mm. Uh, um, what's her name, man? Christina. No, 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 not Christina for Trump. C and Dive and C. Oh. Oh. Petra. Petra. That was Petra's margin. So Tre Petra used to go to a trade show. Her trade show on average would cost her five grand. And I said to her one day, Petra, do the math. Five grand divided by eight. And she's like, cool, I have to make nearly 60 grand to break even. And she would average, on average come home with 50 grand worth of sales. She's negative. So but at least you get exposure. Well, as you go broke. You want with me on this? Because she has to bring in this guy here has to bring in 48 grand to make enough profit, gross profit, to pay this salary at 8% margin. For that expense. For that expense. So every time you, you, you hear people say, oh, it's only 400 bucks, or it's only whatever, it's the same thing in, your, in, in life, like, like the coffee. It's not a 5 buck coffee, it's a 7 buck coffee. You know, because you, had to, you, had, you, you worked for so many hours at a certain wage, to get that before you pay tax. Then you pay tax and then you buy it after tax dollars. The same thing with business owners. They just think, well, I have a $4,000 employee. I pay that $4,000 employee for the four grand that comes in. I'm like, yeah, but you have costs. What's your margins? No, no, I can pay it. And then they're like, why well, have I got no money in my bank account? Because you don't understand margins. Is this making sense for everyone? Questions? Andrew, if you had a product-based business, would you advise extending <clears throat> payment terms with your suppliers to get ahead on if you're behind, like with Troy? Could he ask for, you know, net 60 or net 90 instead of if he's on like a 30-day payment term? For sure, for sure. I mean, there's a couple of key things. I'll take this down. And I'll show it to you. I'll show you because I have an example of that. Of what we did with Helen. Well, Helen was looking for a looking for an investor in her business. <coughs> And she's like, Colin, I, got, I need to get an investor. And I said, why? She said, because I need half a million dollars. So I said to her, let's work, let's work with your uh, suppliers and let's make a deal and I'll show you how it worked out. It's pretty cool. Small, but it's okay. Does anyone can read that content? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's cool. That's cool. I like it on one screen. So, how do you get rid of this stuff? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Cool. So, let me give you an example of that one, Andrew. So, first, watch. So, watch this, okay? So, this I use this at Profit Warrior. I want you to get this. So, this is a simple spreadsheet. So, here, okay. So, I want you to stay with me. I'm going to go through each example, and I'll come back to your example at the end. This is Andrew, because it does not want to lose people. So, you look at this company. This actually was a, a lady down the road who owned a jewelry store, pretty much her jewelry store. Okay, was it a jewelry store? No, I think that's the next example. So anyway, so this company has income of about 15 grand a month, depending on some months it's uh, less. Their cost of goods, because they're 55%, so of that, 55% is their cost of goods. Mm -hmm. with me on that? Mm -hmm. And then they have all their overhead or expenses. It's the same thing. So they have the overhead of $7,090. So their monthly profit and loss is very simply income, less your cost of goods, less that, and negative $340. Okay. Then there's the cumulative down the bottom here, which goes back up top, um, because you have a bank balance. So the next month, they start out next month, what's their bank balance? Negative 340. Negative 340. Plus their income, minus their expenses, uh, cost of goods, minus expenses, they're still negative 340, now negative 680. Is this a healthy company? No, okay. 
So what they end up doing is, we take that company, so give me something, what do you think they could do to improve their cash flow? Look at all the different things. They not pay themselves that salary. Everybody. Yeah. <coughs> nice to order off. So I, I'm funny with this kind of stuff. So yeah, we could, we could make the company super profitable, but the person goes broke in their personal life. Mm -hmm. Okay, like me, I, we, we all, I know I work in my own company to make money. I don't work in my company to keep everyone else employed and me go broke. So I say leave the salary in. I can say on this one, possibly a bookkeeper that much, I think you need a bookkeeper pretty half that. Yeah. Okay, even maybe 200 bucks a month. Staff, come back to that in a sec, Jay. So that's 200 bucks a month, whoops. Okay, so a lot better already. Yeah. Just by yeah. taking the bookkeeper down. So let's just say camp pages is dead, we don't use camp pages anymore, that stuff's just a waste of time anyways. And so staff, you know, let's say 900, heat, hydro, alarm, phones, maybe you go get a new deal on your phone. You get the phones down to, I don't know, 100 bucks a month. Who have we just done to make your mark? Gabby got the phones from 1,200 bucks a month down to 300 bucks a month. Wow. Do the math. Twelve thousand dollars a year in reduced in savings. Like we look at this stuff all the time. Why? Because this is what we teach. So look here now. Now we get that phone down. Oops. Now the company. Now we're profitable. Okay. Now we're super profitable. But unfortunately, we. What's the big expense here? It's a ten thousand dollar a month. Yeah, they're not bringing it. No, the income. income's gone down. So income goes down. Now they're back to Shit Creek. Okay, well, I've shut creek. So now all of a sudden, they're, wow, the things aren't working. Watch what happens though. What's the cost of goods? Top left hand corner. So if I take a cost of goods at 55%, and I say, let's get our cost of goods down, let's get it to 50%. Mm, okay. I go to my suppliers and I say, hey, can I work with you to get my cost down? Who one does the numbers? Wow. Wow. Everything changes. Watch what happens if I don't change anything. Let's go back here. How do I get it back down there? Hello? <laughs> How do I get the thing back down home. again? Go to home. home. Okay, thank you. Um, where do I go back? What's the back tab? Okay, control Z. Yeah, control Z. Yeah, just undo it. Okay, control Z. Let me, just, let me undo all of them, okay? So that's that. Now let's change this only to 50%. Mm -hmm. Think the cost of goods is important? Mm -hmm. The most important number in a company. So that change, our independent of changing anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, this company, so everyone with me on this? Mm -hmm. yes? yes? Okay. So watch what happened there. Let's just keep it as 55. Let's just say, you know what? You're an idiot. Go, stop, go work out of your placement. Wow. That person's got money coming in, they're making four grand a month. Yeah, a couple of months of negative when the, the income, when the revenues go down. Not substantial, they've got money to spend. So this person, you look at there, this is the most important line, it gets their bank balance. Here are these few months or negative, as an individual month, but in terms of their money in the bank, they're growing. They don't have to rent. So when I hear people, I'm going to go rent space. I'm like, are you crazy? Like, why are you renting? So some of you might say, well, why don't you rent out a couple of offices here? You understand why now? You want to on this? Like, it's just money. That's, you know, oh, but Colin, you bring in 500 bucks a month from Huli and 500 bucks a month from the other guy. So that's 1,000 bucks with gross margin. We don't have to make two or $3,000 in revenue now to pay that 1,000 bucks of rent we have. Everyone with me on that? This stuff's smart stuff, OK? So, if you look at that, so that's just one, that's an example of control Z, Z. So that's just the one example. I think I have to go back again. So that's one example. So this one's cost of goods, the same thing. Look, it's negative here. So this one I talk about to our, to our students, I say to them, you know, everything is, this, this company looks hunky-dory. Everyone with me? You know, it's six months out. But forget about January. This should actually be whatever currently updated, but it's not. Because this will be today. This will be 
May or June 2019 going forward. Because always predict forward. And all these costs come from what your average monthly costs are. You predict them forward. Where did this company go wrong? Because like, look at this, super positive. This guy's like, hey, I've got money in the bank. Things are great. What happened? The rent. They increased the rent. They moved? Mm -hmm. What else? Me. Rent. They're heat and hydro. And, and up the staff. The Everything went up. Yeah. Everything went up in May. Everything went up in May, but yet the revenue stayed the same, if not went down. <laughs> Was that a good decision? Months. The thing is, I got money in the bank, so now I become dumb. And the owner started drawing more. Owner started drawing more, so I kept it the same and said, you know what, let's just keep the rent the same. Let's keep, let's just keep all this the same. This company's now got 30 grand in the bank. Stayed in the same place. Instead of supposed to be bleeding. One decision can change everything. So this is what I, this is what I do with our, when I do pro C, pro CO work, the first thing I look at is their cash flow. What do we need to change? I look at the expense, I look at their cost of goods. And I work with the, with the, with the people. Do we have to have all the products that we have? You know, Scott and Cindy, mm -hmm. you know, in Scholar's Choice, we eliminated a ton of their products. They weren't selling. But come on, we love those products. I don't care about shit if you love them. <laughs> you know, if you love them enough to be broke, no, well then don't be broke. Okay? So the key thing, watch this though. We kept it as May and said, let's make this four grand. Like he wanted, the, the, the he or she wanted an increase. They're still a healthy company. Now making the money they want. But they went and paid a whole bunch of rent and they increased, the, up, increased their phones, they increased all their other things. It just made them go broke. It's making sense for everyone? Yeah. It's eye-opening, isn't it? Freaking eye-opening, man. This stuff's crazy. So, Colin, how do you get around the um, potential eye-opening that somebody might have when they see Make Your Mark as a cost when you do this worksheet with them? Because we're an investment. So, like, you don't get, like, for me, your phone's an investment. Mm -hmm. Your marketing advertising is an investment. Heat and hydro, <laughs> you can't have your people freezing to death. You know, um, Staff's an investment, you know, so a lot of this stuff is all investments in order to get what you need. So, but it, like food, eating out three times a week, that's a sheer cost. No, no, I eat out of the clients, I'm, not all the time. No, eat at home, you know. So it's uh, the investment side, and this is what gets the Make Your Mark students, because what do the Make Your Mark students do? They look at their gross margin, they're like, my payment's 700 bucks a month, I'm making 30%, so now I make 2100 in revenue, to get my 700 bucks to pay make your mark. Interesting. So this becomes, that's why I love teaching Profit Warrior, because it becomes a discussion at the event. It becomes a hustle. There's like a buzz at the event between the students. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, I know what you're talking about. They're like, what? I'll make your mark payment. And they're like, how do you know that? I'm like, I've only done the course, I don't know how many times. And, but it's eye-opening for them. Because we put this up at, make, at, at Profit Warrior, then we say, now, one example we use is like Tim Horton's like coffee for the team. So every morning you go and buy coffee and donuts for the team at 50 bucks. At 20% gross margin, you have to bring $250 worth of revenue that day to pay for the 50 bucks worth of donuts. I mean, you know, you cannot run a company only on that. There's also what I call wind in people's sales and, and team motivation and inspiration and that kind of stuff as well. But, you know, but it makes it to the students think different. They walk out of Profit Warrior to go to lunch, and they're like, this is a 40 buck lunch. <laughs> Give me a bowl of pizza. I need to make 200 bucks to pay for my 40 buck lunch. Why am I buying this lunch? Makes them think. So then, so then, then of course, the opposite happens. They come back with like McDonald's wrappers, and they're like, oh, I didn't expect you to become unhealthy now. You know, keep your balance sheet healthy, but keep your body falling apart. So this is a, this is a simple. So they go back again. A simple company, there's a few key changes. I shouldn't see it. Control Z. Oh, sorry, thank you. Am I right? One no. more. There we go, cool. Thank you. Look at that, the company sucks. Q -Q -P, you know, by the end of December, let's just say this was January right now. By the end of December, they're negative 22 grand. Mm -hmm. Yet, they can make some key decisions. These, this, this decision here was because they had money in the bank. Let's move. Let's go get our space. Blah, blah, blah. And this is what I get our students to do every single time. So give, give, give an example of this. So let's just say, 
things are really good now. You're like, things are bombing, bombing along really cool. You say, you know what? Let me just do this. Let me hire a marketing manager. So this is what we do with, our, with all our students. It's like, okay, since so hiring a marketing manager, things are going great, what have you. We can hire a marketing manager, yeah, probably April. April looks like a good time to hire. We've got money in the bank, things are good. So let's put in you know, five grand for a marketing manager. So we put the five grand in. Like, hmm, first month, didn't change too much. By the end of the year, I'm like, whiskey, tango, foxtrot. You with me on this? Mm -hmm. This is what every single student should be doing. You first put in the cash flow, then from there you look at what is it, how does it impact our cash flow. It, it's so like even so like now we look at hiring a marketing manager in the office. That's been through our cash flow. I, I spent the weekend on the ca our, our cash flow, making marks, looking at all the numbers and figuring all the numbers out. Because this makes sense when you're sitting over here. But the nice part is when you put this in before you hire them, before you interview, you're like, what do you think we're going to pay? You're like, oh. We're going to be negative, seriously negative. So you don't do it. So this person would be, and it's like, oh, I want to hire a marketing person, but you know what? Maybe I hire a marketing person and they work out of my dining room. Mm -hmm. they don't, I don't move space. My salary's still the same. Um, I decide to get, you know, keep my set, all the stuff at the bottom of the same. And does your revenue go up and down a little bit of that? Maybe you'll be you a bit. <laughs> bottom line, just throw that out there, yeah. Let's just say, let's just say, even a small amount, your revenue goes up by twenty, like twenty percent. Yeah. So twenty-four grand. The company starts to turn really quickly. Like you got it all the way down. You know, so the key, the key thing would be a marketing person would be like, I don't make August and September not so slow. So I'm busy with the. It's really interesting with. Our clients in uh, Atlanta, who I was with, uh, with on Friday, is with them, they're like, they have three months of killer revenue, like Postal. six million yeah. in three months. And then they suck wind until the start of the next three months again. I'm like, you guys are on crack. So we did, I did the cash flow for them, been building this with them. They didn't have a cash flow, can you believe it? A $10 million company that has zero cash flow. In terms of nothing built like this, whatever. So I start building with them, and I have it on my computer in my office. And I go through the whole thing with them, and when I was down there with them, I'm like, wow, what happens if you made Christmas as successful as um, your back to school event? So it's a school product company, you know? it's called the School Box. Like, ah, Christmas doesn't work. I'm like, it does for Cindy and Scott in Vancouver, in, Canada, in uh, Ontario. That their, their Christmas is as equal to their back to school season. In terms of revenue, ah, that'll never work. I'm like, well, then I'll, I'll also pack my bags and walk out. Because if it never worked, it'll never work. Are oh, you open to having? You know, so we put a whole, I put a plan together for them uh, when I flew back, and we'll make Christmas this year as big as their back to school with the strategy. That's a game changer for them. Change, change the whole business. Change the whole business. You know, Trevor has one of these. I mean, I, this is those I work on with all our clients. I work with Trevor on his cash flow, what have you. So if you look at this and you go, let's just go to number three. You get, there's some of these examples are really crazy. Um, there's one more. So this this company, this is one of those crazy ones, Andrew. This is um, what you what you what you spoke asked about. Yeah. So this is a company that you can. Their cost of goods, if you look here, the gross margin is all over the place. The reason being, because they decided to say, we're going to spend about $56,000 this year on product, in terms of what we're going to buy. Can we pay the supplier equal, equal monthly installments, mm -hmm. no matter what we sell? But they supply the product. It's not healthy, to be honest. I mean, it, it does good for them, but the first few months, it's, it does good for them in that first few months, because otherwise they would be you know, in, a, in a serious place. But their, you know, their average share would be, the average gross margin would be, I don't know, 58% or something like that. So that's one way of structuring it. So some people structure it that way. And then there's the one crazy one, which I used to be, which was my uh, equipment company, which was this one, I think it's the number four. Come on, get out of there. Look at this crazy company. 
So this is what I used to be in, it was equipment sales, mm -hmm. like uh, mining equipment. So you get, let's say, a hundred and sixty thousand dollar order, but you get fifty grand up front. Look at how much, what, what it does to your money. So payment terms become critical. Payment terms become critical. You know, if if we said, you know, would you pay us, you know, so of course we have 160 grand coming in, but we have to pay out 50 grand to the manufacturer, you know, to for the steel and everything else to make the machinery, and then we have to pay another 50 grand worth of steel and all that kind of stuff at the end. Really, what that doesn't do is we've only bought in 60 grand, we paid out 50, but our gross margin is crazy. Our gross margin is super small. The key thing here is that does it really impacts your cash flow. So what they could do, they could say, how do we get our cash flow up? And just simply change the cash flow to, so our cost of goods are here, we can't change that. But how do we, what happens if we've got 100 grand up front and 60 grand at the end? Because the order's worth 160 grand. See so what happens to the cash flow? Just by changing the payment terms. So excuse me, so I can have 100 grand up front instead, and I'll give you 60 grand at the end, mm -hmm. four months from now, once the equipment's ready. Well, it makes a big difference. But if you keep it the if you keep it the way it was, you have to find 13 grand somewhere. Does this make sense for everyone? Mm -hmm. Now there's lots of numbers on here. What I want you to really get though out of all of this is we have income, we have cost of goods, we have expenses. And this, these are the two that I look at the minute I go into a company. Because they've already got revenue coming in, they've got income coming in. It's what are these two things here, and where the, where's, where's the hole? Where's the, where's, the, where's the hole in the bucket? And you start to see this. I mean, this company, you know, I'm going to draw whatever, four grand, six grand uh, down here. Um, everything pretty much stayed the same. They just drew more out. But the challenging part is now they're negative over here. And then they go back to positive. Why? Because they've got another order in, you know, income came in, cost of goods, what have you. This is how we used to live when you know, Gabby and I was, when, uh, when I ran the mining equipment company. There would there'd be a year and a half we would have no orders. A year and a half, not a single order. And then we'd get a $4 million order. Mm -hmm. Then you'd eat happily for a year, whatever. It was crazy. We then eventually got, uh, we got ourselves out of, the, out of that hole, which was really crazy because the company, I took that company over when they had zero profit. Hadn't made money in 15 years. We put one of these together, yeah, they lived on government grants. So, you know, this person, if they wanted to keep on doing what they're doing, they would have to go find, the, thing, the biggest hole they get themselves into is about 17 grand. So they have to go find a loan somewhere or line of credit or whatever for 17 grand, they find that, they'll overcome all the challenges. Make sense for everyone? Yeah, so I don't want to spend a ton of time on this. I want you just to get to understand cash flow. Like for our team, like Penn, uh, for Penny, this is what, this is like Penny's, there's, a piece, there's pieces in here that are absolutely yours. And it's actually part of cost of goods too with the event venues and all that. But Penny's done really an awesome job getting the cost of goods down. You know, that's why for all of us, I'm so adamant about, let's get our revenues up by putting the right hearts in seats. You know, and we look at our Facebook ads, we look at all the pieces we do on a regular basis to say, what's giving us a return? Are we, are we getting the return we want from each area? And the challenging part is, and you probably, it's all of you should write this formula down. If, I always use this as a very simple formula around um, any cost. So let's just say, um, Javen comes to me and says, Colin, I want to hire another salesperson in the ambassador program. And that salesperson is going to be, I don't know, call it three grand a month for now, whatever it is, okay? So it's like, so three grand a month, and he's like, but they don't have to bring in three grand. No, the first three grand we bring in that they sell pays them. The second three grand we bring in pays cost of goods. The third three grand we bring in pays expenses. The fourth three grand we bring in make your mark finally make some money. So when you were thinking about this stuff, all of you were like, oh, we just hire more people. Because you think of the three grand. You don't think 12 grand. Could you say all four steps again? With pleasure. So first one is to pay the person. This could be any expense, Penny. It could be mainly, it's actually, it's mainly around people. It's easier to look at it. 
Um, and of course, let me be fair to some of you, and I'll give you the rest of them in a moment. There's administrative roles, you're not there to sell. It's really difficult to bring in. But then sales have to overcome and compensate for all of that stuff as well. So the first one is to pay the person. The second one is to pay cost of goods in the company. The third one is to pay expenses. And the fourth one is when the company finally makes three grand. And I think this is really good for everyone in the office to know. I mean, for our team leads and what have you, absolutely, you know, it's important to know this stuff because otherwise we're like, oh, we just hire another person. It's only four grand, only five grand, whatever it is. No, it's not. You know, it's whatever your margin is, you know. And we, we're fortunate to make your mark our margins around 60%, which is really good to have. So we've worked hard at that, man. Like last year, last year went down. Uh, this year it's gone up dramatically. Why? Because we're very focused on who we bring in. Very focused on who we bring in. And we're getting very focused on client retention as well. That's hence the biggest part of this meeting is retention equals reputation. I want you to realize that. More people retain, the better our reputation is. The more people that leave and we just let them go, the more we say goodbye, like, who cares? Yeah. No, for us it's no, we care. We care that they stay with us. That's why I wanted to get you at least the basics of understanding cash flow because, you know, when people phone in, you know, it's, and we'll, we, we'll probably end up in the call a little bit later, which is fine, is, you know, what are they doing to get on these three areas of the company? It's not rocket science. You know, it takes a while though. Like, I'm not turning all of you into coaches today. Like, there's going to be a two or three day training that's going to come up for the people that decide to eventually become cash flow coaches. Which we're going to have students come on board, like what have you, eventually down the line, to become cash flow coaches to actually really coach people through this stuff. It takes a lot of work to, cook, to get to fully understand this stuff and be so good at it all the time. So my suggestion would be is I'm happy to, to you know, for even you for yourself, you know, you look at your personal life, put all your expenses in your personal life, put car loans in, payments, um, pet your know, gas, your insurance, put everything you pay every single month, your hydro your internet, your cell phone, whatever it is that you pay every single month, put it in and tell yourself, well, how much do I have to bring in? But then also put in your gross salary. And your gross salary, less your tax. Your tax is your cost of goods, equals net, is equal to your gross um, profit. And then from gross profit, you pay your expenses. Makes people really think. My margins are very good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's like, and then you take the stuff like condos and all that kind of stuff that you have, rental properties, <laughs> bleeding properties. I was going to say, let's not make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> but you put them all in. You put your mortgage payment in. You put your you know, taxes, whatever I pay, uh, property taxes. You put it all in. And you're like, where do I stand? Mm -hmm. You know, I have one of these that runs in my personal life, and I have, which is my, what I call my uh, net worth spreadsheet. And I always look at where my net worth is consistently every month. Where's my net worth? Is it going up? Staying the same is the worst case scenario. Going up is what I want to grow at every single month. So what am I doing to do that? And I look at that all the time. You know, put some planning together around it, what have you. Because when you want, what you put your intention around, expands. You know, so put your focus around, expands. So I'd highly recommend playing with something like this in your personal life first. So I want to get used to it. I mean, I, don't, I can't tell you you have to do it. But like, does anyone see the benefit of doing it? It makes you really think. He's like, I'm going to go spend, you know, I eat out so many times a week or whatever. And you're like, okay, what does that cost a, you? Do you have a spreadsheet like this for a net worth that you cover in Money Mastery or kind of a sim simple version? I could, I could give you one. It'll take me 10 minutes to draw one up. So we should maybe add that because if we have it for Profit Warrior, I wonder, would that be an appropriate thing for The challenging audience? part is when I get to numbers, like, you know, I don't know where everyone's at mathematically in this room. Mm -hmm. But when I do Profit Warrior, I spend the first half an hour teaching basic math skills. Now when I say basic, how to add, how to subtract, and how to divide. Because people don't understand margins. Yeah. What's a, like, how do you, which, which number goes below which number? Like, well, you can't have a gross margin of 140%. You can't, you know, it doesn't work. It's always less than 100%. You know, even if you do a, a service where there's no cost to your service, you're still your time to a certain extent, 
you might be at 98% or 95% gross margin, you can never be 100% gross margin. It doesn't work. Only time would be is if you got given a whole bunch of product and it cost you nothing. And you've sold it for whatever, then you can be 100% gross margin. So this stuff's really super duper. So I'll, I'll look at that for yourself as well, uh, Donna. It's to get one, I'll, I'll draw it up for you where you can use it in your personal life and you can have some fun with it. Um, where you can start to really look at you know, where things are at for you, put your salary in, you'd be amazed by the stuff that comes out. You, know, you, have, you have your um, salary slips or whatever each month, or your pay, or what do you call those things? Pay stuff, thanks. Call them slips. But they, your pay stuff is it tells you what your gross was and what your net is. You, know, you put it in, your gross is what your income is, your net is what your cost of goods, you know, your clear cost of goods, which is your tax, mm -hmm. and then from the red, what's left, you pay all your expenses with. Mm -hmm. It's freaking eye-opening. And some of you would be like, hey, maybe I should phone my credit card company, maybe I should get rid of some of my debt. You know, remember Money Match, you do that whole debt rollback mm -hmm. situation? Well, it's amazing how many people, even I talk to, who don't know how to Well, I guarantee I'll phone Troy today. Now, there's one key piece. Let me try and do it with you to see if you can get I think all of you will grab it. There's a big difference between markup and margin. And that's, a, that's a bigger challenge that I see for so many people. And, you know, like Troy, let's just say he has a night, I'll just keep it to his product. He has a bra that he's selling for, that he buys for 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. And he's then, if he says, what's the difference here? It's actually fascinating mathematically. Let's just say he has, let's say he has a bra, that's his business, that's $50 is the, is the, $50 is his cost of goods, he pays 50 bucks to some supplier for this bra, whatever it is, okay? Then he comes back and he says, I'm going to mark it up, and I'm going to sell it, I'm going to mark it up by two and a half. Two and a half, okay, so 2.5 times. So that equals 125 bucks. Am I right? That's, a, like at Nordstrom, that was our average. It was about two and a half times our cost of goods. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your markup is equal to what? How many, how many dollars? 75. You're right, okay, cool. Markup 75, which is your mark. Uh, what's the margin? The margin is the profit, which is 75, am I right? Yeah. Divided by what I set it for, the 125. So I'm going to do the math for you. So it's 3 over 5, 3 fifths. So 60%. The markup. Is 250 percent, but the margin is 66 percent. Hope I don't blow one's coconuts off. Because when you look at the numbers, so I bought buy the bra for 60 for 50 dollars. I go back to my store and so I'm going to multiply by a factor of two and a half to put it on my shelf. So now it's on my shelf at 125 bucks. Make sense for everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. So my cost of goods is still 50. So 125 less than 50. I make a margin. Of, or a, you know, a markup of 75, or a gross margin of 75 bucks. Mm -hmm. But my margin is 75 over 125, which is, you know, that's my profit over, my, sorry, over my revenue, over the 125, 60%. So someone's like, oh, but I'm making 250%. No, you're not, you're making 60. This blows people, when I, when I, do, when I work with clients on this, I had one client get up in the they get up in the room and walk out and he's upset with me. It's like, oh, I'm making so much money. I'm like, no, you're making 50 or 60 percent. I gave it to you, Troy, so a certain part of this stuff that for you too. That's a difference between, I do a whole presentation on that, markup versus margin. Because markup is not the same thing as margin. You know, if you say I marked it up by, you know, it's, it's how I marked it up by, a factor of 1.5, which means it's then 
$75 is what your retail price is. How much profit are you making? Gross profit. Mm, 25 bucks. The 25 bucks over what your retail is is equal to? 23 and a third. Yet, when people say I marked it up by 50%, you with me on that? So I marked it up by 50% because I times it by 1.5. Your real markup, your, your markup's 50%, but your margin's 83 and a third. And that's where people get negative. Because oh. they do the math wrong. They do the math wrong. They don't understand the difference. No, it's, only, it's a 50% increase, Colin. Yeah, but your cost of goods don't change. Yeah. So this is the interesting part. When people do this stuff, is... I'll, do, I'll show you one other small piece, then I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll let it simmer because otherwise you might get overwhelmed. And I don't want to get overwhelmed. Watch how this works. If I have a gross margin of, let's just say, 50%, a nice, pretty healthy average gross margin for a company. Mm -hmm. So of every dollar I bring in, half of it is gross profit. And all that, from that half that I bring in, I go to pay my expenses. Everyone with me on that? Mm -hmm. So, here's the interesting part though. I give a client five percent discount. Because your discounts come right out of your gross margin. What percent discount am I giving them? Because 5 of 50 is 10%. You're actually giving 10% of your gross margin away. Colin, it's only 5%. No, it's 10% of your gross margin. Put it with me, I can see a few hard balls rolling. There's no, there's no such thing as a silly question now, we have a serve. So, now you're like, but Colin, let me give away 10%. just giving away 20% of your gross margin. Brutal. Gross margin is the most important number in your company. And in retail, that's a killer because that's what they all do is discount their product. 100%. Interesting, huh? So, this is what, so when I worked with Cindy and Scott, they were, always, they always told me, Colin, our gross margin is 50%, our gross margin is 50%. But on average, they were discounting 10%. Mm. So what is really their true gross margin? 30%. 30. So I guess if you wanted to give a discount to a customer, you would already factor that in your planning. Well, to give them payment terms. Yeah. It's way better to give a client payment terms than to discount the product. There's a different story, like with, with us, we have our packages, what have you, there's a marketing strategy between the 92,000 down to the 16,000. There's a marketing strategy around that. Um, the key piece for me, though, is if someone, if you're with somebody like, oh, that price is too expensive, can you give me a... Uh, we, we get it at Business Mastery. You know, people come and it's like, we've, you know, can we get a, a further discount if we're paying full? We had it with ladies from Seattle. Yeah. I'm like, no, it's gone from 92 to 16. Like, what else do you want? Yeah, let me take my shirt off my back, give it to you as well. Like, seriously? Or if I pay in cash. Or pay in cash, or whatever. No, you got a discount, a substantial discount. You know, so the big part for me is I want you to think about this is, you know, so for, for Scott and Cindy, when I was working with them, I said, so you keep on telling me you have a 50% gross margin. I told you to talk crap. You only have a 30% because all you do you spend your time doing this. It's only 10% because only 10%. Yes, of your gross margin, which is 20% of their gross margin. There, this is what I call effective gross margin because effectively that's what they're giving. And they discount all the time, all their 21, or well not 21, but their 20 retail stores. And like, now you understand why you're not making money. Because you calculate everything on this, but really you should be calculating on this. And I've opened their eyes. That, that's what changed their company to go from negative $900,000 in 2017 
to $1.2 million in profit in 2018. Purely by changing, by getting them to focus on this number. And then, and then forget their marketing director, their marketing sales director, Julie. She says to me, because I, 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 when, I, when I left, guess where our margin was at? 38% on average. Substantially more than the 30%. Because what's the 8% over 30? 25% increase in margin. Which means a 25% increase in profit. Oh, crazy, man. Yes. Crazy. So, Julie phones me and she says, but Colin, we have to always go down to the, we have to always give a 10% discount. I said, it's not helping you. Why don't you give an 8%? Why don't you give a 7%? Why don't you give a 3%? Well, it's either 5 or 10, isn't it? <laughs> 5 or 10 is a huge number. It's a huge difference. So, I never forget Julie. I never ever forget that one email I got from Julie. And she's like, Colin, I think we can bid at 34%. But, you know, or maybe, I think, sorry, we can bid at 38 But I think in this one, because it's the kind of client that it is, we should go to 28 I'm like, that's a huge gap between the two margins. So I wrote back to her and said, just so you know, there are numbers between 28 and 38. And I got back this email and just said, fuck you. <laughs> it was there. It was across the email. And that was it. I was like, thank you, Julie. It's like, it's so obvious. And they bid at 34 and they won the contract. Wow. From 28 to 34, 6%. 6% is 20% increase in margin of what you would have bid on a $50,000 project. Huge. Yeah, absolutely huge. So this stuff, these gross margins are the heart of business, the heart of companies. The average person doesn't look at them though the way they should be looking at them. Any questions? I know lots of process. So for that business or well, actually we're gonna to get to that piece of training afterwards, don't we? What's it? Just no, ask it, a question. My my question is for, for for those business owners that are facing those financial challenges, typically between that zero to fifteen K mark. You're saying gross margin is nine times out of ten where they where they where they're stumbling. Most of them typically, stumbling. Oh, no, we most of them are stumbling, which is really truly. Mm. They've got sales. That's why they're all low revenue. Makes sense. Yeah, that's why they they got no money because we are we down here as making marks us. Now, 697 is down the bottom of monthly payments that they pay us. They've got to bring in enough sales, pay their cost of goods, and then have enough left to pay us. Are you with me on that? So our goal, when we're on the phone with people, how do you get this to go up? We help them get that up. This becomes insignificant. We don't get this up. Yeah. This becomes mm -hmm. a thorn in their side. This is the whole training is about. Anyone with me on that? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like anything. Like, you know, eventually my dream here at Make Your Mark is like, with our team, we, we do it a little bit already around cash flow, putting a, you know, a certain amount of Make Your Mark's cash flow with our team, is because I want people to see, like, the, the stuff that you don't just pay for, you know, it's not just a three grand here or two grand there or whatever. It's whatever it is to buy by our margin. Yeah, we're fortunate at Make Your Mark that our margin, yeah, our, our gross, um, what do you call it, our gross margin, I think it is, up here. Our gross margin is like 60%, so it makes a lot, so a dollar divided by 60% is we have to make $1.4 to pay that, to make uh, that, that $1 of whatever, to pay that person, whatever it is. It's super awesome, thank goodness. But there's companies out there, the margin is terrible. Now look at Corbin's company. Corbin's gross margin is 4%. Wow. His net is about 1.1. It feels like, wow, Corbin does $50 million a year. If Corbin did $1 million a year, he would only make $10,000. He has to do $50 million just to, just to survive. You know, because there's different kinds of businesses. There's businesses that are high margin, often low volume. Then there's ones that are Low margin, like Corbin, high volume. Of course, what's ideal? High margin, high volume. Doesn't often happen. Doesn't often happen. I said for cocaine and skincare. <laughs> and skincare, skincare is a double one alter cocaine. Now, cocaine's margins are crazy. You know, it's like you 
buy a gram for a dollar and you sell it for $75. You know, or you buy skincare for a tube of skincare for you know, 70 bucks and it costs them like a, a buck ten to make it. But it's got Sarah Blakely or someone on the top of it. This celebrity's made a fortune from this side of endorsements. And a gram is more like 30 bucks. Huh? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking who's going to correct me. Oh, okay, let's check it. <laughs> I was waiting for you either. How do you know? <laughs> you know you're wrong. So I'm like, okay, how do you know you're right? <laughs> that was funny. You all brought it to <laughs> So that's a key thing for me. So the bot, so back to Jaden's comment. We have to get their sales up. So if we took their sales, so so let's just say, let's just take that as so we, we're gonna get their sales up for them. Give me one thing to get their sales up. Raise prices. Increase prices. The easiest one to start off. For me, sell to the right people. Here's a challenging part. I see this. I'm going to just turn this. Put this back for a second. Turn it off. So, if you look at, I get to meet, I'll never forget the one lady, she was a super nice mom, single mom, and she had a product that she wanted to sell, and she's like, or service, she's like, Colin, I'm going to sell the service on, um, some of child, like, how to bring your child up really effectively and stop arguing and whatever, and, and, and conflict in your home and what have you, but she was like $1,000 a month. I'm like, okay, but if you go to a high-end area, maybe you can sell that service. But to the average single mom with children, like they can be, you know, most of them aren't making the money they want to make. Mm. So why are you off this? So they're selling to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to Jewish synagogues and selling to Catholics. So it's selling to the right people. What else? How can we also get sales? Previous up? clients? Referrals. I'm sorry, let's go to referrals. You know what I'm saying, right? So it's a different one than previous clients. Previous clients and referrals. Mm -hmm. What else to get sales up? Can have an offer, a packet, packaging, package deal, yeah. special joint offer. Joint venture. Would you do? Would a joint venture be in that category? So here's the thing. It's just, it's just it would be, but I think for now I would keep simple. it in. What? Yeah. So what can we help Troy with on the phone right. today? Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, yeah finally. Bundles. 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 Have you, what about your pricing? Uh, my pricing is good as, as it is. You know, this is a big part of this, is what Kieran's been talking about, which is the mindset around their own pricing. Self belief, self worth, self confidence. I mean, I went through my challenges with this, I'll be honest with you. When I first started making your mark, I was like, well, why would people pay me like three grand a month to work with me one on one or two grand a month or whatever? And, been bad, you know, some clients I'd make like 30 grand a year and I'd be like, wow, I made a lot of money. Now we charge like 85 to 100 grand a year and it's, I have no hesitation in doing that. In fact, I think we're cheap for what we do. You know, at 697, I want, to, I want you to really realize this. Every single company I've spoken to in the States says our, our pricing is too low for what we deliver. So we have to figure this out. How do we help these people get their sales up, or do we just completely go after the people that can afford to sp you know, spend time with us? Like, you take, um, some of you haven't heard the details, you take a, a cabinet member, this is not a challenge for a cabinet member. We don't lose cabinet members. Why? 
because they have the revenue, they have the income, they've got cost of goods, they've got some expenses, they've got some employees on board, they might have some office space, they've, they've definitely got some expenses happening, and they've got profit. You know, some of them are profitable, but they have somewhat challenged financially. But the big part is, then they're not thinking how to get rid of making mark. They're like, how do I embrace making mark more so I can make sure I stay part of the program? That's the best mindset. And I love the name. Gary's like, well, call it, why don't you call it that? It's called that for a reason. Because you need the best mindset you know, to be part of that program. And it's all getting all of these things, thinking these things through. So, Troy, tell me about your pricing. Troy, uh, where are you hanging out? Who are, are you selling to? Troy, are you dressed correctly? To to be in line with what you have. Okay. Troy, tell me about your previous clients. Do you collect data when they go into the store? Have you phoned them recently? No. Well, why don't you phone them? Phone all your past clients. There's no you sitting in your store with your finger up your what's the name waiting for clients mm -hmm. to come in. Phone them, phone your previous clients. Have you asked other clients, your clients for referrals? Where are you networking? When your store opens at 10 o'clock in the morning, there's networking groups that meet at 7 a.m. until 8.30. Go meet network. Oh, it doesn't work. Well, they stay broke. You know, what bundles can you put together? That's just that's exactly the calls we're going to do this afternoon. And you might be like, oh, no, 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 I just need to get out of the program. That's a different story then. And it's like, you've bought into, I'm, I need to be out than rather in. That's how simple that is. That gets this out. This, for me, a best mindset we don't really focus on for now, because most of the time it's just expenses for them. Most of our best mindsets are service-based. Once I get this up, this becomes insignificant. Life becomes easier. Make sense for everyone? Mm -hmm. Questions? Any other thing else we can add there? Bundles? Craigslist. In what sense? Well, if he's selling to people and they don't want to walk in the door because they don't want uh, people seeing him going in for sex. Yeah, he could sell Craigslist. He could do, of course, it's Calgary, so Kijiji. Yeah. No one cares about okay. Craigslist and Calgary. <laughs> Does I know that? Okay, so Kajiji would be a good one for them to go and do, look at. You know, what? What trade shows? You know, any trade shows coming up or anything else you could be attending. Like, the majority of people honestly sit in their offices, sit in their homes, and they stress, mm -hmm. which is freaking useless. It does nothing for your business. You know, there's no you staying at your computer screen and hoping an order's going to come in when you know you've done no work to get an order. Yeah. Going to get out and go hunt, like you guys. Uh, let's go out, you and Cheryl, let's go out and you know, go to board of trade events. Let's go to do networking events. That's why we built the whole Make Your Mark. What's on this? This is make your mark. Mm -hmm. All on networking. You know, we sit in the office and I was like, what can we, else can we do? Go back to what we used to do. <laughs> it worked. You know? So that's a key piece. So you take all of this and the spreadsheets and you say, okay, fine. What can I do to do this? Because the rest of that goes away. The pain of the payment goes away. Get them to pop the pain of payment. Mm. Get them to pop into the right, pop into sales. Get rid of that pain of the payment. And work on their mindset. Do you, do you see what I'm saying, Kieran? You can work on their mindset as much as you want. Mm -hmm. If you don't get them doing any of this stuff, mindset's useless. Yeah, it's like, I'm super excited today about sitting at my desk. And what are you doing today? I don't know. What should I do? I have no idea. Because most of these people need to be told what to do. Has he done any client appreciation parties, or Andrew? That would be good too. Host your your top fifty clients and have them bring a friend. Probably not. We I think we recommended to him last time we were there. Is he even tracking who his top spend clients are? Yeah, those ladies would love that. Like he would do a little party boudoir thing. But oh does, does, God, does he even know? Like tons of does he have a spread a database of who they are? Who they are? Who they are? Yeah. I have no idea. That's what I'm going to find out in the we phone should time. ask him. Yeah. No, that's the whole thing. Like, it's the same as I sat here in this, in this uh, brilliant room with um, Dustin from uh, Wicketree. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Dustin, you, you sat there. So, yeah. on the meeting after that, I said to him, are you, are you phoning your top clients? 
It's like, I don't want to phone my clients because I feel like I'm selling them. They're just phoning to ask them how their furniture's doing and you know, how they're and wish them a great summer. Like, is this called client care, Dustin? He's like, and he gave me a list of them in the next meeting. I said, he said, you know, and I'm going back to Langley now, and then from Langley I'm going to Vancouver to watch the Canucks, and then from the Canucks I'm going home again. I'm like, great. So what are you doing on the way to the, you know, back to Langley? What, what, what are you doing on the way to, um, to the Canuck game? He says, um, just driving. He said, you've got 10 people you could phone. No, but you know what, Mike? Cut the shit, man. Do the work. You know, I was with the clients on Friday. I was with, the, of course, with the, the guys in Atlanta, with Dave and Chris. And Chris is, Dave has this opportunity with one of the churches down there called uh, um, Passion City Church. 25,000 people go to church on Sunday morning. It's a stadium. It's not a church. It's a stadium. It's crazy. And they go to church on the Sunday morning, and they have this, Dave and Chris do these kits for um, back to school. You know, pencils and pens or whatever people need. But the church does a fundraiser. And they ask each person in the church to buy one kit, you know, buy something. Go to, go to the store, go to Staples or whatever. Buy some stuff, bring it in. We'll then give it to the children that are disadvantaged in, in uh, southern uh, Atlanta. Or southern, uh, what do you call it? In southern Atlanta. So Dave comes up with this idea. Why don't I get hold of the church? And we put a kit together, yeah. and people go on their phone, and all 25,000 can go, click, yes. buy, done, then have to spend it. So Dave's, like, so Dave's like, I was like, great, so Dave, we need to do this. I'll do it. This weekend was Columbus Day in the States. So I'm like, he said, I'll do it Tuesday. I'm like, what are you waiting for? What do you need to do? I need to connect with two people that can introduce me to the right person there. One's my daughter, and one's um, a very good friend who can connect me to the right person at the Passion City Church. I'll tell you the story, I want you to hear this. This is, this is typical business owners. So I said, so you dropped me at the airport today, aren't you? This is a Friday afternoon at like noon. You dropped me at the, at the airport, yeah? What are you doing on the way home? Oh, Colin, I can't be texting while I'm driving. I said, don't text, phone. You're phoning those two people so you can find the right connection so on Tuesday morning you're visiting the person you should be visiting. Guess what he did on the way home? Zero. Then, phones me on the weekend, I'm cash flow challenged. I'm like, I just want to say F off. Like seriously, like, you don't do the work. You can't expect to sit on your ass and get fit. You, have to, you, you, you hired me to work with you, go make those phone calls. Oh, but you know, like, all the excuses. This is Troy, excuses. I guarantee you sitting in your store paralyzed with fear of what's going to happen. Fear is going to just kill you. You know, it's our biggest stress in our society is, is uh, fear and, and stress. And stress is the shit we make up about stuff. It's like, go out and do your stuff, Troy. Like, go out and meet people and get yourself dressed up. And he was super pumped off to mastery. We did the call with them. He dressed himself nicely. He went out to events. A lot of the stuff works. Guarantee you, he's got depressed about the whole situation. He's back to wearing jeans and a t-shirt, frumpy, walking to... He probably don't even go to networking events anymore. And he's like, my business has no sales. No, your business doesn't have someone with the right mindset. And the right energy to go out and do what needs to be done. So I put my love and energy around him this afternoon when we phone him, that he gets it. Because they let us let him drop out. What does that mean? This goes away from him. This goes away from him. Are we acceptable that I people to go broke? That's what we're saying to people. Their best, cho their best opportunity is with us. If we don't get help, where's he going to go? So the challenging part is, he doesn't have any sales coming in. He's challenged with that. So get rid of the pain, get rid of the next pain, get rid of the next pain. So what he's going to do is cut all his costs, and then what happens to him? He has no sales coming in, he goes broke. And that's not fair. For me, this is, we get them in the program, our responsibility to keep them in, to make sure we get this up, so then they... Is it realistic to um, expect or ask people to fill out that worksheet? Like everybody, best habits. Um, because I looked on his file, he joined us, it looks like in February, February. and we had no realization how desperate this was for him. Like that the we, did. Was, we did. We did? We did. Okay. We knew what situation he was in. Yeah. So, you know, there's, 
And for us, we, it's, a, it's their choice, and we always had the event. There's no discussion at the event. You're going to have to do the work. There's going to be calls. You're going to have to show up on the calls, do the work, all that kind of stuff. And they're like, yep, I'm going to do all the work. The hardest part for me is most people don't do the work. Most people want to get rich sitting on a couch. They buy on emotional high. Mm -hmm. But Andrew, it's, it's emotional high to an extent. You know, we're not like other companies where you've got 10 minutes to sign up for the program or you no. miss the program. Right. It's like you have from Thursday evening till Friday evening, you have 24 hours to make your decision. You know, no one's putting a gun to your head saying you have to make a decision while you're there. Only thing I ever say, anyone who sets me on challenge, I go, are oh, you going to put the effort in? Are you going to put the work in? And if they say yes, then I'm like, that's your choice then. You don't have to join the program. Because the person comes to me and says, it's a mortgage payment or the program, I'm like, you're an idiot. Go pay your mortgage. How you know, seriously. Has he tried YouTube videos? For what? Well, like, what, what do you imagine? Just the, I don't know, but I'm sure there's a lot out there. Just an advertisement type thing? Like, no, to say the how to thing. on his toys. That'd be kind of hilarious. I don't know that he would be the right. You haven't met Troy. No. Um, I don't think he would be yeah, the right. Cross is a biker almost like really. Oh, yeah, really? I mean, well, yeah. he must believe in them if he's selling them. Maybe not. Maybe it's just like. Hey, I'm selling these things because I make some money off them. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think he might have, I don't know, but one of the things, part of the uh, discussion would be, his biggest thing right now, path to quickest money. I don't think YouTube videos would be the path to quickest money for him right no, now. No, not for him right now. His biggest thing, get out of his store and go meet people. And be super well dressed. You know, and maybe get rid of the sex toys in his store. And put money online. I was chatting with Gabs last time, we had a really good discussion around this last time, like, even if he did a client appreciation party, you know, and Gabby got phoned by a friend and said, hey, come with me, I'm going to this lingerie store, mm -hmm. and she walked in and the whole thing was all around sex toys, Gabby would be like, this is not appropriate for me to be here. You know, I'm not saying there's, nothing, there's something wrong with them, it's just, there's certain things in, the, in our communities with the way we see it, you know, for all of us. So, you know, and then we get seeing a net, at the sex toy show in Vancouver, and she's like, I'm not here because uh, I'm a friend I'm like, shut up, you're here. Like, you can't say you're not here for yeah. you don't want to see anything. Like, you're not blindfolded right now. But like, you're obviously here for a reason. This is a lady that I knew. But so. if it was YouTube, it would be after everybody's closet death. Everybody's around in the house or whatever. That's what I'm yeah, doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just one step away from a porn channel. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> So that's what we'll discuss with Troy today. Yeah. Everyone with me on this stuff? Mm -hmm. Our number one thing is we cannot put up with people wanting to drop out because that doesn't serve them. I think we do them a huge disservice by letting them drop out. In some ways, and we're going to probably get stronger and stronger at this at the events, is getting to a stage where people it's like, you know what, you shouldn't be in the program. You know, get more and more caliber, uh, quality caliber people in the audience where it's like, you know, because we know there's certain people when they sign up, there's a high likelihood they might not make it. And there's other people, there's a high likelihood they'll make it. And then there's people in between that you're not sure where they're going to do it. Like, if you looked, if you took Marcus, Marcus would have been a high likelihood not to have made it. And in eight months, seven, eight months, 40 grand a month. Yeah, he's an anomaly? Absolutely. You know, we have other ones that are high likelihood to make it, yeah. and they fail miserably. You know, another anomaly. So it's like, we don't, I don't think it's our, our right to choose who we bring into the program. Mm -hmm. My number one thing, if someone tells me mortgage, I'm like, you pay your mortgage, you pay your rent, you do whatever, whatever you have to do. Do not join our program and then figure out, you know, like, we have clients that join, and in the first week they've watched just about every video. They're like, I'm crushing this, and they've gone. Because I can see the ones, because they ask questions online, on the academy, and I'll answer all those questions. And there's other people like, my next course is only in six weeks. Oh, that's too fast. It was like, <laughs> what do you need help with? I'm badly with sales. You have access to the academy. I don't like online training. Yeah. Like, I had one of those last Shut week. up. Like, you can't complain and then not do the, then you have, a, you have like, you know, it's like having a, a you know, I never get an analogy at an event that I was at. The guy said, in the washroom, you know, it's like at an event on stage, it's like, in the washroom is a million dollars in cash. And on the count of three, I want you all run into the washroom and go fight for the money. Cash, the first one to get it has it. And he's like, 
I'm not going to count to three. He goes, one, two, sit down. He says, here's the deal. There's a million dollars out in the world right now. How many of you are fighting for it? Because you would have run to the washroom like a crazy idiot. Why don't you do that for your business? I was like, wow, that's a great analogy. Because the average person, but yet there'd be people in their seats go, I probably won't make it. I'll wait for them to come back. I'm not strong enough. I'm not weak. I'm too weak. I can't fight through those people. There's people bigger than me. Every excuse in the world, why not they can't have the million bucks? As opposed to, maybe I should go through the roof. While they're all running, jump through the roof and get it. And I don't have to be a big person, small person, fat person, thin person. Just have to be smarter. You with me on that? It's like, yeah, it's like, unfortunately, average business owner is full of excuses. And sometimes when you, when you spend enough time with this stuff like this, you're like, it's easier just to stay with make the mark than become a business owner. <laughs> Honestly, because it's crazy. It's like, it takes a lot to build a business. A shit lot to build a business. And I wonder how many people are really open to self-examination. Like, when you put all the numbers out there, up there, like it's very, it's like going to the doctors, it's like a physical, right? It's a financial <laughs> physical, yeah. essentially, right? And like, when I do, like I've done this for a couple people, like gone and did a quick online um, presence audit, and it's like, how open would they be to actually hearing feedback? Like, the two that I did, like they're atrocious. I mean, I would say that to them, but it's like, in my head, I'm looking at this going, how do you even make sales with, what you've got going on right now online. For, for some people, it's, I mean, sadly enough, I, Donna, I say we live in a zombie. There's a, there's a phase to life right now called the zombie phase. People have so much debt, they go, I got broke for 50 grand, or I got broke for 500 grand, who cares? I'll just keep on getting more debt. And it is, because the average person lives from paycheck to paycheck. If that, some people, there's more month than there's paycheck. <coughs> So you know? they just numb that out. So basically, we're the ones who have to wake them up. Yeah. Maybe so that's being the big thing for me. Nothing would drive me more. I don't know where everyone in this audience would really, for this audience, and our team is financially. At the end of the day, if all our team was massively financially abundant in every single way and form, which some of you might be already, which is awesome, and some of you maybe not, is let's get ourselves financially abundant, and then it's easier to help the students. You with me on that? Mm -hmm. It's really important. It's like. I'll, I'll send the, the, the spreadsheet out, I'll build it uh, this week, and I'll send it out. It's a simple spreadsheet, and just, you know, spend some time looking at your other stuff. It's fascinating, quite fascinating. Is Troy calling us, or are we calling Troy? We're calling Troy. Oh, because it's three o'clock. It's three, okay. Is my phone there? My phone's in my office. Let me go grab it. Are oh, you grabbing a chill? Oh, do you want me to? Oh, please, while, while, while you're down there, thanks. Sorry, I started eating my mouth. I was <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I just want everyone to listen to it. I don't know where it's going to go. We'll just go with the flow and put the intention around. It's going to really help him. Sorry. Was that helpful for everyone? Yeah. yeah. It was alright. It took me back to like, my university classes. Hey? Like, and then it took me back to like, my, <laughs> like, the classes I took at school, and I was like, oh, I, I know this, but I forgot this. <laughs> This is the this is the heart to life, unfortunately, because yeah. money is a money is a current money and money is our, our currency. It makes the world go round. You know, you can say love people and give and be great gracious and like absolutely. Same time though, you need money. Right. Yeah, you've got to pay your rent, pay your mortgage. You know, put a roof over your head, right? Put a roof over your head and doesn't take around money. Table. And this mom and dad are rich. Which and I you'll create a personal, which I don't have. <laughs> and you'll create a personal cash flow one for the staff office to use for personal for sure awesome. and then the same thing we could actually use that one and send it out to our clients and Absolutely. say hey let me look at the spreadsheet because yeah. totally. be if, if their personal so side is shocking mm -hmm. the, the chance of their business being good right. is pretty slim yeah i've <coughs> got a phone number oh. i'm yeah. just going to use this chat time to get a yogurt too do you have a sign-up system yoga bar do you want a yoga bar please if you got okay. a yoga yeah sorry do you have oh, sign-up system oh, yeah. yeah, it's a different way of looking at it. I always make a budget and just follow my budget. Mm -hmm. I know I've just heard of people doing like the envelope system mm -hmm. where they take out all the cash mm -hmm. at the beginning of the month and like you spend 800 bucks a month on groceries, you put 800 bucks in an envelope. Mm -hmm. And when all that money's gone, there's no more 
Like that's it. Yeah. What's Whatever Troy's last name? Blaskin. B L A S K I N. Oh, I don't. I don't do that. But I mean, yeah, I know. I'm going to go on the phone here. So if we get one time, I want to put on speaker. So if we just keep it. Sure. Sorry to interrupt everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's put intention around. It's going to be awesome for him. Hey Troy, it's Colin Sprague, how are you? Good, how are you going? Good, my friend. Is this a good time for you? I know they set it up for 3 or 4 o'clock your time, so I want to make sure it's still good for you. Yeah, good, man. Troy, just to, I know the team in the office said to me, things are really tough on your side, and I thought, well, let me give you a call and see how I can be of service to you and really help you. Anything I can be of, that can help you with? Not much you want to do, guys, and So tell me where things are at. What's happening? So what, what do you think went wrong? thinking of what can you know, what can you do on your side you know, from your side to you know I know we, we spoke about it when we first chatted in February was around get out networking get right networking in the right groups meet the right people all that kind of stuff what's happened with that well I plugged away uh, or still plugging away to be honest with you um, I have picked up a few extra events as far as networking events and as far as um, like there's other companies that are putting on little seminars and whatnot, I've kind of tagged into them to get my name out there and whatnot. And it's the same problem I've been having since day one. I have a lot of people that say they're interested, but they never follow through. And then you, you follow up with them several times and yeah, 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 I'm interested, I'm interested, and they never follow through. And in this particular industry, so to speak, um, this, this radio station I'm kind of connected with, they are... Um, a, uh, adult lifestyle stations which are specifically geared towards you know the swingers type area and that type of thing which I thought would be a great hook for my business and I've gotten a little bit off of them but again they're in the same boat too they're, they have a club and they have this radio station and they're down over last year quite a bit as well so we're all kind of sitting here scratching our heads and going well what else can we do to get traffic through the door and you know so let me, ask a, let me ask a question, just, so just give my, some thoughts for myself, because I want to see if I can ass, you know, assist you, because, you know, remember, and I'll say, you know, you've heard me probably say it a hundred times at the event, you know, every challenge is a foundation for an amazing solution. Sometimes we just, you know, don't see that solution, so that's why I'm sort of brainstorming with you, and I said to the team, let me phone and brainstorm with you, maybe some opportunities. So let me ask a question. So when it comes to the lingerie, what would you be... I know that you're higher end, but is it the ultra higher end, mid tier, low, you know, low end on the higher end lingerie? Where would you fit in? No, we're kind of uh, low end to mid range on the high end stuff. Like we're definitely not ultra high end at all. Um, okay. But we're we're above your basic like mall variety store. You know what I mean? So we're gonna I'd say more mid range if anything. 
more mid-range. So my question would be is then, you know, you know, there's certain higher end, uh, there's certain higher end areas of Calgary like Bears Paw and what have you. Are there any sort of networking areas in that area, in those areas that you're going to attend, where there are the higher end female market that you're after? Yes, and I have tried a few of those. I haven't tried them all because I mean I could only do so much of what I can see. But like um, for us downtown, was this a bigger one? So I've done three networking events downtown. Um, uh, what's the area called? Uh, some of these communities, uh, it's not mission. What is it? Anyway, there's a, there's a hiring community actually fairly close to my store, and I've gone to a couple of their community events. Uh, just to get the name out there and start talking to people and, and, and whatnot. And again, it's it's always the same response. Yeah, it's interesting. I'll come down. Or yeah, it's interesting. I'll have a look at your website. And nothing seems to materialize from it. So my question would be, so what do you do to get contact details from them when you're with them? Do you do any follow-up afterwards and invite them down? Or maybe you have to do something different and say, you know what, I'm going to... Yeah, because people say they want to come down, but they're not coming down. They say, hey, why don't I book an appointment with you and I'll come pick you up and bring you to the store? Like, you know, doing things outside of what the norm is to get a result that you're looking for. And I thought of that, like the actual one of the ideas I had was thinking about doing was um, doing like a personal shopper type, type thing. Now, as far as the networking events go, when I make connections at specific networking events, yes, I do a minimum of three follow-ups within uh, the first week and a half okay. uh, with these people. And then... Um, you know, another thing I also did was I hit every every bridal shop in the city, trying to tag onto them as far as the law and race side things go. Um, but when I go to these community events, they don't want to get too personal, give out too much information. But I've also mentioned to them, for example, that we are putting together a new program. You know, like uh, the one I was thinking of was like a monthly subscription for for, for lingerie, <coughs> and then uh, another one was the personal shopper type thing. Because some people just still have a hesitation of coming into the store itself. So it was more on the presentation of, have a look at our website, see if you like anything, give us a shout, we'll put together three or four pieces of your size, and we'll actually come in to your place, and you can try them on and go from there. Okay. Again, nothing really got off the ground with that. So why don't you, why, well, give me, let me give you some thoughts on this. So t take the, the, let's say, the top five areas of Calgary, you know, the higher end areas of Calgary, like the different communities, and then why don't, when you go to those networking communities, say, you know what, I come to whatever whatever the high-end area, let's say it's Bears Paw or whatever, I come to Bears Paw on a Tuesday afternoon, every Tuesday, um, and I, yeah, we do a, um, a personal shopper, so I'll be coming to Bears Paw every Tuesday. So when you're at an event, you can say, we come every Tuesday, let's book a time, so when I come to Bears Paw, we can actually book a time with you. Like, have it scheduled out for... Um, each of those high-end areas, so when you're there, it's not like, come down, it's like, when you say come down, like, oh, I'll come down, it's like, well, actually, wait a minute, let me tell you something, I actually come to Bears Paw, you know, every Tuesday afternoon, or every second Tuesday, we do a, a private shopper, and super confident in the presentation when you do that, where they'll go, seriously, you come here? Absolutely, let's book you in for Tuesday, and actually book them on the spot. Yeah. That's what I'd recommend, we put a schedule together. I mean, the, the big thing is right now, Listen to your words, and I want to help you with this, is people aren't coming into my store, well then, let's go find the people. Yeah. You know what I mean? I hear you saying, for sure, absolutely. Yeah. So that's a, that's some suggestions from my side, and then maybe as well, is what can you bundle together to, you know, maybe put together different packages or what have you for people that they get, you know, not a huge discount, but they get some kind of discount or some kind of bonus or whatever it might be for a package, you know, for a bundle package. Yeah, yeah, we've tried that in the past. And uh, it's worked to some degree, but nothing, nothing spectacular. And then we ask a question, so how many, how many clients do you have currently that have sort of been through the store, purchased from you? On a regular basis or just one-offs? Um, could be one-offs or it could be a regular basis too. Well, on a regular basis, we have a steady clientele of about 20 to 25 people that constantly come in at least once a month. Um, the one-offs, we're only averaging, um, honestly, we're averaging, uh, I just did stats on this, but you're averaging seven a day, every day of the month. And the, 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 are they seven buyers or seven lookers? Seven buyers. Okay. 
Okay, so yeah. what are you doing to maximize the exposure with those people that are buying from you? Like, do you follow up with them afterwards to say, you know, I know in the sex toy stuff you can't say phone up, follow up and say, how did it work? Because I think yeah. it might be inappropriate. But it's definitely on the lingerie, it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. how's the lingerie, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, are, you doing, are you doing any of that kind of follow up and just checking in with people? To, if they're willing to give us information. Um, a lot of people, I'd probably say 75% of our clientele don't want any, to give us any personal information as far as even email goes. But the ones we do get, yes, we do do a follow up, making sure their experience was good, that the product was good, if there's any concerns, please let us know, that type of thing. So why don't you do something then that you say, you know, we you know, put like a, bu a bunch of uh, lingerie together, what have you, because not everyone's in the sex toy game, but definitely lingerie for the ladies, but put like a bundle of lingerie together and say, once a month we give away um, this bundle of lingerie worth $125, and it's for, uh, for people that, you know, we need your email address and phone number in order to do that. And you get into, into a draw to, in order to do that so we can... So we, the, your biggest thing is building your database. Yeah, well, for sure. Yeah, I mean, we've tried something similar to that as uh, not the bundle package, but we've tried like a, uh, a giveaway uh, once every two months. We were trying to do a giveaway for a value of $150 worth of lingerie. And if anything, just to spread the word and get the, the name out there, which it has helped a little bit, but again, it's not being on a recurring basis, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And here's the thing, I mean, if you've got seven buyers coming in per day, that's sadly, I mean, and I understand this, I'm working with you on it, is that's pretty much a client an hour that's buying. Yeah. Okay. So the big thing for me is how do we get out there? And it's unfortunately we live in that, you're in that market right now in that economy where it's pound the sidewalk in the high end areas and spend more time out, you know, and put a plan together around the different areas and what have you so that you can maybe do the um, personal shopper with them. And then the other thing I'd highly considered uh, Troy doing is taking your tw your 25 clients. When last did you do a client appreciation party? Or just invite them out to a private evening of shopping but bring a friend? Actually, I have one coming up on Friday. Oh, fantastic. How many people confirmed? 20. Uh, and what are you doing to make sure they stay confirmed? Uh, we follow up with them the day before, or sorry, uh, so it was today, Monday. So we do a, a reminder email on Wednesday, and then we do one more follow up on Thursday. And that's 20, pe 20 people of the 25, or is it 10 people and 10 guests? Uh, it's actually two, two regular customers bringing 18 guests. Holy moly, those are nice customers. They are. One's a photographer, right, that we work with. Okay. So she, she's bringing the majority of, her, of the guests because we've kind of teamed up with her uh, on, a, on a bunch of different promotions that, um, you know, if they're in my store, for example, they grab her stuff and book with her, she gives them a small discount. And then when she books her clients, they come to my store for their lingerie shoot and they get a small discount through us. So, mm. you know, we've had promotions like that for the last eight months, which has worked fairly well. So right now what she's doing is she's struggling to get clients as well. So she's actually reached out to, to us um, to throw this potential customer party for her, which in turn will benefit us as well, right? Okay, so you can you bring other clients into that, your existing clients, or is that pu purely for her client appreciation? This particular one is strictly for her. Okay. Uh, we, we do have, like we do have these parties uh, once a month on average, where we do have existing clients where, you know, we have three or four groups of ladies that are, are pretty tight with each other, and they range anywhere from eight to ten people, and then we, we uh, bombard them and say, okay, you know, it's time to come back in and see what's new, and blah, blah, blah. Here's a, a open session for 20 people, you guys have eight, find 12 friends, and, you know, the deal goes up. Okay. And uh, that's sort of been working. It's been dropping off here in the last last couple months. Uh, struggle to book these parties. I actually had one booked where absolutely nobody showed, which was very disappointing. But 
Uh, no, 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 I'm with you on that. I mean, I, I'm just working with you on this because I think it's a, you know, there's a, there's a the, the key pieces for me is, you know, you know, I, I don't know, I just want, I, in some ways I'm like, to me, to throw the towel in is the one challenge. Um, it doesn't make everything go away, unfortunately, but at the same time, we have to be realistic in the, in, you know, in the whole scheme of where things are at, and I don't know where things are at for you personally, but the big thing for me would be, you know, what can you do to get out there, put a schedule together for the different high-end areas, start to put together some more appreciation parties, what have you. So we do these kind of high-end events for Make Your Mark as well, where we have our high-end clients bring us clients, and then the next time we go around, we ask our clients to come out, but also the high-end um, referrals to come out again, and then we, we keep on working the new referral base to bring us more uh, clients as well. So um, keep on working that market. But the big thing for me is, I mean, how many people do you have in your database? Uh, regular uh, regular uh, contacts, we have uh, about 150. How, how, where, how, when, when last did you phone all of them? So if you jumped on the phone and said, I'm going to phone 20 of those a day, because you only got, you're only making seven sales a day, so you've got, seven, you've got lots of time in there to sit on the phone and make phone calls, yeah. you know, I would phone all those clients. And just tell them how things are going, and you, know, you would love to welcome them back, and you'd maybe book in a client appreciation party and say, I haven't seen you in for six months, love you to come down, come and spend some time with us, um, let's get you confirmed. Our date is whatever, June 24th. You serious? Um, because, like, for example, I haven't paid rent on my store for May. I'm not going to make June's rent, and I'm on the verge of losing my house. Holy so, moly. I, um, like I say, I could sell my house and stop the waiting for a little bit longer, but I don't want to make that risk. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. i got to stop the waiting now, and, and uh, it's not that I'm giving up. I just got to regroup, restart from scratch, and, and keep going forward. But right now I have no choice but to, to close the doors because I'll lose everything if I just keep plugging away. No, I'm with you on that. So what are you going to do? So let's just say you shut the doors of the store and you get out of that contract and out of that lease and whatever the situation might be. What are you going to do to continue to sell the inventory that you have? Okay, so what I've got planned so far is um, my plan is to basically shut the doors within the next month. So the last week of June, for example, and the last, I'll have a week to move out, clean up, and blah, blah, blah. So up until now, what I'm going to do with the current inventory, okay, for starters, what I'm also doing is I'm, I'm losing the storefront, but I'm keeping the website. So I'm going to focus more on the online stuff versus the bricks and mortar. Absolutely. So what we're going to do up until then is basically we're hitting all of our existing clients and we're basically going to uh, try and blow as much inventory as possible. Um, so obviously it makes it a little easier and I can probably get out of uh, catch up on my rent and you know that type of thing. Sure. So it's going to be a massive, unfortunately it's going to be a massive discount sales currently except for my online stuff. My online website went up, will stay at the current pricing because that will be continuing. It's just going to be what's physically in the store. Okay. And then, so, so I'm just really thinking about the strategy after that, so, and then what about your know, continued inventory for the online once you get out? Well, that's kind of the nice thing about 90% of my inventory online, I can get drop ship from major suppliers. So, I don't have a lot of money tied up in actual physical inventory, I'll just order it as I need it. Some things I will have to carry still, um, but the overhead on that is going to be minimal compared to what I have currently in the store. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, and sometimes it's the overhead. Yeah, you know, is the challenging part. Yeah, you know, people love love to get you know, storefronts or what have you, and sometimes the storefronts, you know, just are the thing that eat them alive. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what. Like, if I didn't have to pay rent, I'd be doing alright. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, man. You know what I mean, right? Absolutely, it's, man. It's the actual rent that's killing me. I'm losing money every month just because of rent. So yeah, absolutely. If I can continue that, and my, the nice thing is, my online sales have been increasing slowly because um, we've been really pushing that for the last six months so they are starting to come and now with this um, tie into this radio station and swingers club um, they are actually worldwide this radio station 
And so, yeah, my online sales should again start to increase once more. Which is cool. So the, the other piece I'll, I'll definitely look at for yourself is, you know, once once you got get, get, you get rid of the, the you know the albatross around your neck in terms of the store is what is your strategy around increasing the online sales you know so that you you know, you know you spend the time doing that to get that really thriving and I, I think this is a blip in the road for you to be honest i think so too it's a big blip but it's a blip in the road <laughs> <laughs> you know what welcome to business yeah you know, all of us know this welcome to business you know if you don't take risk you don't drink champagne well exactly well, I mean, and I'm like, that's how I'm looking at it. Like, uh, I don't know, about a month ago, I was getting really depressed, really stressed about the whole situation. And, um, you know, I, I kept going back to not to worry about things I can't control. Sure. Just keep plugging forward and keep doing what you can do. And, you know, the whole pause about what thing has been such a big help these last couple of months. Because, yeah, I'm losing my storefront, and, you know, I'm going to be on the hook for so much of the piece of all along, but that hasn't deterred me from getting where I want to go. Very much so. And the big part is, you know, your number one, if I can say anything, your only two things to say, really stay focused on is mindset and sales. You know, yeah. you know the, unfortunately, the, lead, the, you know, the obligation on the lease and all that doesn't go away. It is, is what it is. But the bottom line is I think you can get so much benefit from um, you know, just staying focused on sales, stay focused on what needs to be done with uh, the online and, you know, just build that out completely and just continue to really make that massively successful for yourself. Yeah, well, it's choice to have, really. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm with you on that. Life happens, man. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's, you know, one of those things you end up a year from now going, shit, I'm so glad that happened because now my online sales are skyrocketing and my overhead is substantially less than what it used to be. Exactly. You know, and with online, I don't have to carry staff anymore, so there's another expense done. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much money I'm going to be able to save by not having a storefront versus just doing online. Absolutely. So I think there's a lot of positive in that. It's not nice at the time, of course, and it's not enjoyable, but at least uh, it's better than being, you know, twice as bad as where you're at right now, you know what I mean? Well, that's just it. That's why I came to this decision. Like I said, I could, I could sell my house and keep it going for a bit longer, but... You know, I see the writing on the wall and, and just the world economy, you know, bricks and mortar stores, retail in general is on the decline while online is going through the roof. So, you know, I got to stop the bleeding, re regroup, revamp, and then keep heading forward towards the online versus the bricks and mortar because I don't know how well that's going to succeed anymore. Yeah, absolutely. There's certain ones that definitely will succeed because people are feeling touchy and doing what they want. I mean, you, and I know maybe you're not, not necessarily with the, the, the sex toys, but definitely with laundry. Can you sell laundry on Amazon? Yes, I can. Are, yeah. are you going to build out that Amazon store? Yeah, I've looked into that. Actually, I've got a store set up. I haven't got anything on there yet. Um, because what I'm going to be doing is once I actually close the storefront, I'm going to redesign my website because my website right now isn't tied into my actual POS inventory system. So when we did, we were on eBay and we were on uh, Amazon before, and it was mediocre because I didn't put a lot because I was trying to focus on the storefront. But what was happening was I'd sell two or three items online and then go back to the store's inventory and all, it's off. So then I got a panic order, another one in. It actually started in that cost me more money in shipping uh, because two systems weren't tied together. So with this new website I'm going to be putting out, I'm going to have everything tied together so it's a smooth transition right from Amazon right to the, the main computer. Yeah, you know what, I'll, um, there's another client we have in Calgary that I'd love to do an intro for. He built his Amazon store, uh, he's an East Indian fellow, super nice guy. He built his Amazon store and in eight months is doing multiple six figures. Oh really? Yeah, I'd love to I'll do an intro for you, uh, Raman. And uh, I'd love to do an intro, intro to uh, for uh, him to you because maybe you can get some ideas on how to improve your Amazon presence. Sure, yeah, that'd be great. You know, because hey, uh, this is just the start of a new road. Yeah, I'm making the right turn. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All good, man. Well, I just wanted to phone, check in with you, and to say we had to support you. You know, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll make sure we get that uh, connection done. Uh, to the gentleman that does the, the Amazon store. I mean, he started only, honestly, I think the beginning of the year, if not late last year, and he's crushing his Amazon store. Oh, wow. 
you know, so if you can learn any tips from him, he works long hours, I'm going to tell you that. He, he puts in 16 hours a day, 17 hours a day, but he's, you know, you don't become a multiple six-figure business, you know, sitting on your, you know, sitting on your hands. Uh, yes. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so I'll put you in touch with him and you can have a chat with him. Super nice guy. Sure, that'd be great. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And uh, anything to help and if you know, you, things uh, you know, pick up or what have you, we are, we're here for you, man, for you and Carol. So be, feel free to you know, come back, chat with us. Even if you like, just need some support in some way, your moral support, just feel free to phone, man. We're here for you. doesn't mean because you... You leave the program that we like cheers we never want to see you again we're all about making sure we look after you and keep the connection going too because our goal is to see you successful no matter what oh i appreciate it I, like I said i don't want to leave the program i do want to get back into it i just like i said i gotta regroup at the moment and then hopefully down the road i can get back in fantastic my friend well you go have a great day and uh, tell carol we say hi as well please and big hugs to you both and you know let's get this crush it keep on moving forward and uh we here for you long term so yeah, have a great week ahead. Yeah, you too, Colin. I appreciate the call. I really do. You're, wel you're so welcome, Troy. All right, buddy. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. That was a good call. Holding the story, eh? That's okay. Life happens, man. This might be better for him anyway. Yeah, totally. Oh, that's that's going to be way better for him. Let's see. You should never have opened the store. If you did a cash flow, mm -hmm. a number of clients yeah. I get to go, I've got a store, I've signed a lease, and I'm like, Yes, but um, he didn't do the numbers first. He didn't do the numbers. He, I'm telling you, if he got, let's just say, his average piece of lingerie probably sells for 60 bucks, I don't know, maybe 100 bucks, whatever it is. His markup's probably only 100%. So he's paying 50, so he's making $50. If his rent is five grand, mm -hmm. do the math. Mm -hmm. How many bras and pieces of panties and G-strings or whatever you have to sell to make fifty dollars worth of profit to pay your five grand in rent, and he needs to do something about the whole website. Like he kept saying that nothing would come of like people would say they were interested, and then you know nothing would come of it. Well, they go to his website, they'd be scared off. Like unless I knew the guy or had a friend that shopped there, I wouldn't shop at his website. No, he said already. He said he's going to redesign it. So Thank I think the key piece is you know the hard part here is people like oh he's closing his store. He shouldn't have opened a store. That's that. That's the, I guarantee you. If I did the cash flow for him before, mm -hmm. I would have said, what are you opening a store for? Work out of your basement. Remember, that's how we started. We didn't come and get this office, you know, the day we started. We were three years into Make Your Mark. Mm -hmm. Three years? Holy moly. What do you mean you're four? So we're like maybe ten years into Make Your Mark before we came to the office space. Mm -hmm. Worked out of my basement. Like, seriously, that's what, that's, what you, that's what it takes. The average business owner doesn't do that, though. You know? So it's, it's not a negative thing. I think it's super positive. I think it was a great call. Some of you might think, no, like, here's the thing. He'll come back. Mm -hmm. Guarantee he'll come back. You know, because we care long term for them. He just has probably that? about four delivery. Oh, delivery. He probably has about four months of cleanup to do. And then yeah, I know. Two months to figure out with that lease. And then probably another two months just to regroup with the whole website design. Honestly, he would get himself out of the hole he's in by phoning all 150 clients, mm -hmm. say I'm having a closed down sale, yeah. having a party, come in this, the, the next two weeks and take all my inventory off me. Yeah. But why would a really he good deal. Sorry. Sorry. Why would he deeply discount his inventory? He's when he would just paid. sell it. Yeah. Or does he, he probably needs to generate, he said he was capital, um, he's capital he has work. no working capital, so he needs to quickly generate some working capital. Yeah, but if he had like home lingerie parties. Or, you know, I don't know if he has to pay, like he said, he's behind in May and then he won't be able to pay June. Like, I think he needs to generate money he's fast. An injection of cash. Yeah. All his cash is sitting on a shelf. Even if he sold it and he broke even, he would get his, and he just he got money invested back, he's got all his cash back, he can pay his rent yeah. for the next couple of months, get out of it and start again. But that's, so I mean, going forward, that's a fantastic idea. And a personal shopper, like, I like the personal shop. Totally. Especially someone that'd be willing to come to your house with a few pieces. Like, and it's like, he's, like, look at Lysenza, oh, like, how many girls are on that? <laughs> I think a party would be fun with that. But, like, how many girls are, like, them. on Lysenza? Yeah. Like, every time they have a sale, like... Well, that's why passion parties became so big. Right? It's because people are uncomfortable going to stores, so... And it, there's something different about being with your girlfriends and kind of yeah, learning over hilarious. things. and. So being better about buying totally. it at your home as opposed to going to a brick and mortar. Well, 
Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever got an extra large? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> deletes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hilarious, right? Like, he's got it's so many good. options. Mm -hmm. Cool. And the subscription service too. That's yeah, that was totally that was a good one. Which yeah. made me think of Instagram. Like he could post pieces yeah. on Instagram. He's that is such a huge Instagram. market. And pay huge. for you know. Well, um, we look at all things. We, look at, we spoke to him. Sell to the right people. We asked about um, previous clients. We asked about referrals, bringing people in. We asked about networking. We asked about bundling. Kijiji, always going to worry about because it, it might not be a viable thing to put on Kijiji. They have certain rules. Wouldn't worry about that too much. But the key part is we went through all of these pieces just on one phone call. You with me on this? Mm -hmm. So, was it helpful this afternoon? Yes. Absolutely. You never yeah. want to buy Instagram followers. Ever. <laughs> Sorry, I just heard you. No, no he I, should be on Instagram. Oh, He's yeah. a picture yeah. I don't know business. if I fully agree with that, but that's, no, you know. There's going to have people sitting in China and India going like this. No, Julie said that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Sorry? Julie said that a lot. I have to buy an instrument Yeah, mm -hmm. never. It's just mm -hmm. bad practice. Mm -hmm. Completely bad. Okay. Any questions? The the um, Excel sheet that you had up is that something that we can share with? I mean, as we get into this and mm -hmm. are on the phone with people, it would be a really useful tool. It's on Profit Warrior. You can Profit Warrior. All the spreadsheets are in Profit Warrior ready. Okay. With the handouts, with the downloads, with okay. everything. So, I mean, I'd like me, to see that as part of onboarding that, you know, we're doing a, like an examination, like a brief examination if we're having cash flow coaches, like that's your, your task. Like we want to take a peek at your, your cash flow chart and we want to see your online social media and website presence. Ideal thing for us to do. It's about being true, right? It's charged 50 grand a client. And then ask them to do their cash flow in the first week, and only after that will we decide to have them join the program. I'm not opposed. <laughs> we just have mouths to feed. No. You know what I mean? So and it's not just who's around the table, there's time by five, four or five for the average number of the people at home and yeah. family members and what have you. And the key piece for me is, you know, it's that's I mean that that is a fun market to go after and make it really exclusive that you come in. Yeah, you because know, that's that's the heart of what I do with every client. That spreadsheet, way before the business plan, and everything else. Because there's no use building a business plan when your numbers don't work. Right. It's ask about face. You know, it's like, hey, let's build a business plan. And how are your numbers? What I don't numbers? Know if they work. I don't know if they're profitable. <laughs> your business plan's sexy. Just go buy, it, sell this, and do that, and whatever. Are you even profitable? You know, it's really, really important to know that you're profitable. So, mm -hmm. cool. So my goal with the whole thing was to have it so we. Um, everyone has a, a basic understanding. Some people have a better understanding. For uh, you know, team leads like um, Andrew and Penny and Gab, Gabby should have a full understanding of this, but she does. She, now, Gabs works with me on this stuff. I'm just joking with her because she's in finance. Um, but really getting the Javen, Cheryl, getting these pieces where you, in your area, this is built out specifically financially. You know, so that we know that we would be profitable in each area. Because you start to realize, that's why I always say to people, like, yeah, great, let's just go hire a new person in your area. Now you know what the numbers are. It's not just another three grand, not just another five grand. It's every expense has, you know, it's like, hey, let's get this computer program. It's $1,000. No, it's $1,000 a month divided by the gross margin. Could be three grand a month you have to make in revenue to pay that $1,000 a month in cost. It's fascinating. Anyway, so that's what I wanted to get, to get through today was just getting, our whole goal is to turn the company into more cash flow based. So that we can help our students, you know. And if you walk out of here, the only thing you walk out of here with is these formulas, very simple. You walk out with these are the key pieces: um, revenue, cost of goods, expenses. All we need to do is help our students raise their sales, so we can overcome this challenge. So they don't go here. We raise sales. This becomes nothing. They become this. That's all. We have. That's all. Uh, seriously, that's all. And then some of the key sales items. What have you looked at? What are the different things you looked at? You know, very different. I'm not sure what you did on the mindset calls, Kieran, but I think it's very different to what a mindset call is. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? So, mindset, anyway, the mindset's awesome, but at the same time, it's a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. You still have to have a great mindset. I was, I was, I was going to challenge him on stage. I thought it was just, he's on that edge. 
of, you know, if you hear his words, I can't find clients, things aren't working. In our industry, the photographer's broke. This person's broke, who are you hanging out with? Yeah, when he started going into like, oh, you know, Home Outfitters is leaving and all this, like, what does that have to do with your work? And that has nothing to do with your business. Nothing. But he's just fishing for that. Justification. The justification that the economy sucks, therefore. Let me give you an example. So I work with Trevor in Calgary. Mm -hmm. So Trevor, it was so funny as last weekend. So Trevor last year did $620,000 in revenue. We already have on the books for this next five months over $700,000. And we haven't finished, we haven't started the season yet. I believe we'll finish about 1.4 million. In Calgary, in a down economy, where you cannot sell lingerie, home outfit is disposing, and everything else. What did you do? Landscaping. Sprinklers. Landscaping and sprinkler and irrigation. So, they're both luxury items. Yeah. They're not necessities. Mm -hmm. It's not like, honestly, lingerie is not a necessity, but it's, it's a necessity to have underwear for some. But, <laughs> but the key thing is, it's, it's pretty much a part of your clothing that people buy every day. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I just don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. It was just Andrew that made me laugh. Because <laughs> I already knew what he was thinking. <laughs> you put my boat up in. <laughs> it's just a thin layer of cotton protecting us. <laughs> oh. Oh, but the key thing, for me, the big part for me on that is, it's mindset too. Trevor's Trevor not allowed to buy that mindset. I will beat the snot out of him. He buys and then, oh my god, Calgary this, Calgary that. He's already way beyond what he did last year. When he got to the end of last year, which ended December, he was at 620. Now he's at 700, we'll be at 1.4, if not 1.6, by the time we get to December this year. He will never look back in that business. In a down economy, I don't, I don't buy into anyone's nonsense. Like, people, my number one thing is we don't buy into people's challenges. Some of them are legitimate. He's legitimate, he's going to close his store. That's okay. You should never have opened it. Guarantee if I did the numbers, you'd be like, why did you even open the store? Mm. Because we get excited about spending money as entrepreneurs. I open a store and people will flood through the door and I'll be a gazillionaire. And you open your door and it's like <whistles> Seriously. It's the same with people launch a website. I launched my website, no one's no one's buying it. Well, you have to do something with it. You're only one of four billion other websites on the internet that people have to find yours in the pile of websites. You know, so that's a challenging part for most of these business owners. They believe it's just going to happen like this. But was that honestly? But was that simple? Every one of us in this room would start more businesses. It's not that simple. You know, Javen starting a business, Cheryl starting a business. You'll see. <laughs> Amazing. And not as I don't even wish that upon people. But remember, challenges make us stronger. You know, challenges make us stronger every single day. You know, it's like. Yeah, I've got clients on board and making a whole bunch of money. Then you do your costs and you're like, I oh, actually not making much money. You know, it's really interesting when you do this, when you do the analysis. So let's go, just have fun with this, you know, come and ask me questions. I want people to really think about this. On the phone calls, you know, really helping clients when we go to the community events, how do we help them with cash flow? You know, please, my number one request, I don't think the majority of you have enough knowledge now to really spend time coaching people. Okay, if someone gets into a challenge, I'd like to start really looking at uh, some of the key things we can do with our clients to really help them. Like Troy, Troy's not disgruntled, he's leaving, he's upset he's leaving. He knows in his heart he did the wrong thing by opening a store. He knows that. It's not we caused the failure, we didn't cause it, it was he was on the edge already, he just didn't continue with it. Mm. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm, I'm super proud of him that he's prepared to pull the plug than lose his home. Yes. I, mean, I would have told him on the phone now, he said, like, well, see how it keeps it going? And just you know, sell my home and put the money in. I wouldn't yeah. mean like you're an idiot. Yeah. Get rid of the freaking stone, your home. Get rid of the store. I don't want you to lose your home as well. That would be that. That, that to me is absolutely wrong. Yeah. You know, so just obviously the universe is talking to you. You know, so a lot of times we think it's a negative. It's just a foundation for another great solution to come. If we remember, we say mastery. Welcome the universal channels line into your life because it's going to happen. You know, and if you're not having universal channel lines, you're not pushing. You're not pushing hard enough. You know, like I was saying to Gabby on the weekend, she's like, "Oh, Troy's going to close your store." I'm like, if you don't think about closing down your business every week, you're not pushing hard enough. You know, business is meant to push you to get to that next level. So, really cool. Yep, that's about it in a nutshell.
So what's your biggest learning from the session? Very good. Just the whole breakdown of cash flow. I mean, like, I'm very green with money and finances. Just it's pretty basic, and I've kept it basic. And so for me, it's just, it's not even just a nugget. It's just the whole concept. It's okay. Like, yeah. Cool. It's just the beginning of learning. I'm back to it, for sure. Cool. Pin. Um, that your profit, profit isn't actually your profit until you start to look at all your expenses and overhead and to see what actually you're bringing in at the end of the month once you've paid all your expenses. Yeah, you look at our gross profit. It's our gross profit around figures 50. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, we're going to, our room cost at, for business excellence is 24 grand. We have to bring in 50 grand to pay that room cost, yeah. or 48 grand. Yeah. yeah it's, it's no longer just that cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fascinating. The whole thing, but the entire time you were talking, I was just thinking how it's applicable to every, like every business and to my personal life. Basically, I was like, just how important it is, and how I've never thought to do it for myself, or, or how majority of people probably, like you said, business owners don't even think to do it. So it's fascinating. This yeah. stuff, honestly, what I what, what fascinates me how much we have in this office mm -hmm. that's right in front of people, and people are searching outside to see if they can get help. Mm -hmm inside his office there's so much there's so many tools there's so many great things that are right here making mark which is cool Andrew I was just thinking this would be another <coughs> awesome layer to business mastery Amen. if this was a three-hour session during mastery holy cow mm. I don't know where we could fit it in but for part two yeah I yeah. mean this like what we just did it seems basic because it is but a lot of business owners, I think, think they know this stuff. Like, well, for me, the difference between gross margin and effective gross margin, mm -hmm. that right there, wow. I think right. most retail yeah. businesses probably don't understand that. I have no idea. And they say, I'm giving a 10% discount, so I'm, I still have a 40% margin. No, you have a 30%. <laughs> like, they don't realize what they're doing to their business, and just exposing it for them would be I haven't watched That's Profit uh, Warrior yet. How does this compare to Profit Warrior, what we did? Profit Warrior will take it on a deeper dive. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. <laughs> this is like a holistic overview. So watch, watch this. I mean, I'm not going to put the two of you on the spot. So Cheryl's starting a business, Jamie's starting a business. So how many of you built a cash flow? I should hope so. You've been with me long enough. You better have built a cash flow. <laughs> 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 so so, so, so Jamie's so starting a business, studying, paying for education, doing everything, then decides to build a cash flow. No, you build a cash flow, then you study, then you build all your stuff out, and you make sure it's profitable before you start. Not to put you on the spot, but this is no, the, no, you're right. He's just the average business owner. <laughs> so, so, so the, 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 the absolute respect on that. It's just fascinating. You know, and kudos, kudos to Cheryl. If you, if you said no, yeah, I would have jumped across the table. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think about ROI and all that all the time. So yes, cool. Yes. The gross margin was huge, and I'm visual, so being able to see the impact of those spreadsheets when you did the, the multiple changes and see how that changes online, wow. Even yeah, just one just, sheet. The, the wow. one spreadsheet was a perfect example of, of Troy. Mm -hmm. Take out the rent, mm -hmm. should have stayed in his basement. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you know, I don't want to sell from my basement or a home in my room in my home. Well, then got broke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately. Let's think of it, he has to sell it at $50 profit and gross profit per let's say a pair of underwear or whatever or bra or whatever he has to sell a hundred of his if his rent's five grand just to break even never mind his expenses after that i've never seen that i mean it probably exists in business school but i've never seen that yeah this is not teach us properly at universities because this is in the trenches it's because the guys teaching it have never owned a business That's right. Amen. 100%. Jay. I was in restaurant operations, and a lot of these terms are very similar to what I felt even when I was a GM, but the biggest thing that they didn't teach, which was really cool, was the gross margin and the break-even point. That was nice. That was really cool to see the break-even points on gross margin. Right? That so, was a big eye-opener. So well, in all the clothing stores, like, I don't know how many subscribe to, like, deals and stuff, but there are, I'm always seeing the 20% off jeans, like, you know. Yeah, but the thing is, they raise the prices. So they catch Gabby in this one. Oh, Gabby, we always joke about it. Always joking, right? it's, our pet, it's our patio discussion. Yeah. She comes home like, I got a deal! I'm like, honey, they marked it up to 150 bucks. Yeah. Then they said 20, you know, like 20% 20 discount or $50 discount, so it's 100. Yeah. Last week, if you'd gone there, it was actually 80 bucks. But they mark it up, and they then give you a big discount. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I'm getting a real big deal. 
they're like. But she still money. feels amazing when she leaves the store. Yeah, she always does. Always. Always. I got a deal. I got a deal. Yeah, burgers and stores do the same thing. And I'm like, you got screwed. You got screwed. The only time it's a good deal is, and this is what Nordstrom does for their yeah. anniversary mm -hmm. sale, they discount mm -hmm. new product that's coming in. Mm -hmm. That's when it, because most retailers discount oh, old stuff oh. at the end of the season. To get rid they of discount new stuff at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that has revolutionized their business. That's cool, man. So, yeah, the, anyway. Cool. That's interesting. Um, I'm, I was really happy to see all this. I've uh, absorbed quite a bit of it from you um, over the years, but Honestly, that sheet, it speaks volumes, and for everybody to have that at their fingertips, and for us to be able to practice what we preach, I think that's really important um, to keep ourselves accountable, too. So, so how long have you known Salmon? Before I was born. Before I was born. Before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> when he was in uniform, you were in liquor form. you knew Salmon before then? So, he's he just got his, <laughs> I bought his spreadsheet from last week. The first time I've ever seen Salmon at a cash flow. In all the years I've known him, and he's been in business for 20 years. Really? It's fascinating. And his, and his eyes are like, yeah. wow. Because it's vulnerable, like that. Yeah. Well, it's not vulnerable, it's vulnerable, but it's also, the, the one thing I love about that, mm -hmm. as long as you put the right numbers in, which is easy enough to do, there's but no, like there's no stressing. No, it is, but it's very... I think that's the key. Because that's the cool part. Because you see it, now you know where to go. So mm -hmm. that, and that's what you taught at Money Mastery. That is true, like is if implemented much more since then too, and that's what gives you your confidence and your um, you're able to go out and you know what you're going to do you're empowered. because you're empowered. Yeah. That's what the difference is, and that's what you're giving people. I should do I'm money just mastery. Like, teach yeah, them the basic yeah. spreadsheet for money mastery. Yeah. And do the coffee example, my favorite one. Oh, David's face was great. Yes. yes. You know? Every Absolutely. time when I used to go to that course with you in the early days, as soon as you did the coffee thing, it was like everybody's mm. eyes opened up at that moment. But even, I'm talking about even the simpler one, mm. like with your kids. and No, it's not a five buck Starbucks, it's a seven buck Starbucks. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, some of the faces, David's face was like. <laughs> so, it was such a good face. <laughs> you, think of it, you think of your car payment, you think of all your expenses. Well, it's it's all after tax. I was thinking about $50 to $100. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. He's like, I'm glad I'm not on the road with you anymore than one. <laughs> straight, yeah. <laughs> no, straight up. Ali, what was your takeaway? Well, BCIT, they were really big on doing our business plan, but we didn't have to do cash flow. And also, oh. I really loved how on the Excel you could just so clearly see when you just changed one thing, you could mm -hmm. see the impact at mm -hmm. the end. So you could actually think forward and say, okay, what's going to make the biggest impa impact for oh, the least yeah. amount of forecasting? So, like, so I took, I'll give examples. I took Simon's, I, took, I built them a simple one this weekend, or when I flew back on Friday night. And one of the key things on the spreadsheet, I took, they gave me their financial statements, mm -hmm. and I took their. They gave me 11, I don't know how they ended up being 11 months, but anyway. They gave me 11 months, I took the 11 months, I divided it by the total by 11, and I said the average per month is this, and I just put all the expenses all the way across, right off there, mm. off the, um, off from QuickBooks. So I took the, the, the categories they gave me, all the different expenses, averaged it out across for the next 12 months, and then I put all the client names he gave me. So give me your top 50 clients that you're on the list right now. Put them all in the income area, and then he has to put in where they, he expects the income to come in from each of those clients. They're not the recurring revenue, but the actual income from new clients, so that we can get that working for him. And just just the you know, just the just the comments from him is like. This I think like, this is right up there with your intrigue statements. This is just like mad, <clears throat> crazy, life changing. People need to see it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So like with Simon and them, that'll change the entire business. <clears throat> you know, and it's not. It's the big part for me is it allows you to predict forward, mm -hmm. so you can say every single decision you make. In your, so you're like, I want to hire a marketing director, put a marketing director, X salary. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's it, what does it do to our cash flow? Well, by January next year, we run out of money. It's kind of like test driving a car. Yes. For your business. You no, know, they're running investors. Way. It's test driving the car, uh -huh. but knowing how the car is going to behave six months from right. now. Right, yes. Absolutely. And that's, no one has. So that's the key piece. So when you see your top yellow line, Six months from now, because you made, you're putting in something like, yeah. I want to hire a new pro, put a new program in place, get a new website built, uh, hire a new staff member, whatever it is, you put it in, you see what happens, you see, oh, six months time or seven months time, my, my bank account goes negative, 
I really need that person. So what I need them to do is make sure they overcome this. So we hire a marketing person here. They better overcome this over here. Mm -hmm. If they don't, we're in Queer Street. Or we need to go get financing. But not what it does for you when you're negative. Let's say it's a negative 200 grand. You're like, okay, I need financing, but I'm going to get it today. Okay. Go to the bank, great. negotiate, what have you, and say, I'm going to need 200 grand for six months from now. You go to the, and you get really good rates. Mm -hmm. You go to the bank today, and you yes. say, I've got salaries due tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The bank's like, yeah, so well, they have to go get TSC lending, but you're paying 10 to 15% interest rate. Yeah. Catastrophic. Yeah. That thing allows you to do all of it. It's amazing. Cool. Yes? Same as everyone else, just to really just absorb this again. Because it tells you if your product or service, excuse me, is priced correctly. Because mm -hmm. it's not priced correctly, you can build any business plan you want, you're going to go broke on it. Right. It's like, well, you sell it for this, and what do you, what, what's your client acquisition cost? You have no idea. I agree. Your client acquisition cost is 200 bucks, and you're selling it for 150, you're negative 50 before you start. You're like, why have I got no money in my bank account? Mm -hmm. Because your client acquisition cost is too high. That's what's happening with us on Facebook. Client acquisition cost is way too high. Which is interesting, you know, in terms of what's happening with it. But it's really cool looking at other options and because then they can look at their marketing, right? What's the impact of this marketing piece, or what? Like, how much is this going to cost, and what's what kind of income so, do I need to have? So look at the elite mixes. So the elite mixes, the city, the community events, all that kind of stuff. The referrals we get from those, the cost to put a, a breakfast on, honestly, is zero. Maybe a couple of breakfasts and More whatever. More time. Whatever. It's, it's whatever. It's minimal. But it's minimal. It's minimal. minimal. It's minimal in the scheme of things. Let's say round figure, thousand dollars. No, not that much. I'll say half. <laughs> like, don't even. Okay, whatever. Okay, we're yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say for the elite mixes. So we've done all the numbers on this. So the elite mixes are, let's say, fifteen hundred dollars round figure to put an elite mix on, exclusive of salaries. Yeah. Okay. So just for us to put the elite mixer on, hire the venue, get the food, all that kind of stuff. So we only have to bring in three. VRPs to Business Mastery and we pay for that elite mixer mm -hmm. overall. And let me explain it to you. So now a gross margin wise, we have to bring in six. Mm -hmm. If our gross margin is 50%. So we have to bring in six VRPs and we pay for that event. But you the know? conversion and mastery, there's a better likelihood. If you if you went to a high level event uh -oh. that your friend brought you to, hey, this is the program I'm part of, and they go to business, you have such a better chance of converting that person well, and compared now, to a cold lead. And to that point, now do the math when they become Sherpa elites. Yeah. Now we're not just paying for the event, now it's profitable. Massively profitable. Correct. So that, that event's already paid for, and let's say we convert way more than that, we convert 10, 15, 20. Mm -hmm. Now the elite mixes are cash positive. Mm -hmm. My goal with the elite mixes, eventually they'll, not eventually, as we go through it, we'll pay for paid business mastery. So when you go to business mastery, everything we do, even a book, is profit. That's my, that's my absolute ideal by the year. Because we're not far away from it. So and all that stuff's being cash flowed. All that stuff's being cash flowed. Quite fascinating. And the reason why part of this started a few weeks back is because you, know, you look at it, you want one last piece and I know we need to get out of here. Um, watch this, this will blow your mind. So, if you take, let's just say we lose six students a month, six students for May, at $700 a student, what do we lose? Now, in June, it's equivalent of 12. Let's say another six people leave us, because those six are gone, so we're ready 4,200. So June, we've just lost. Then another six. Just looking down the map. So what do you think client retention is for us? What probably the most important part of make your mark? Go get new clients, it's great. You know, let's look after the clients we have. You know, and this just keeps on keeps on going up. You know, twenty-four. Which was out of whatever it is. Did I make a mistake? I missed the six. 6, 12, 18, 
that price. But this keeps on going up. This becomes 16.8. And that's per month that we lose. So we're at 20 grand in five months, we're down. Oh, and this keeps on compounding. Then, that's what you're down. You're down this. To the math. You're down 16 plus 12 plus 8 plus 4. Well, those are the cumulative totals. No. Because I've lost six people here. Yeah. I lose another six people. That's my 8,400. Correct. Right? But that, but 84 is the cumulative total for the two months, not the total. No, 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 no. Because it's a cumulative. So that's not the cumulative. That's what I've lost now. Because I've had six people last month that are no longer in this month. Correct. And these six people here are this month, so that's total. Yeah. But last month I lost 4,200. Right. This month I've lost. They're not coming back. We're, 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 we're saying the same thing. Yeah, we're saying, but these are all added. The total of that is what we've lost. Yeah. So the total, so within five months, Jay, we've 20, 30, 36, 46, 47, 48, 56, 60 grand in five months. Where would we be if we kept all our clients? I believe we should be able to get to this. Retention of best months of students. We're not there right now. That's my goal. It's on the VTO for the vis uh, for visionary part. Everyone with me? Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted, I mean, this meeting was perfect. I didn't design this meeting around this. But you know, the weekend, my big epiphany was we're losing clients and we're okay with it. That sucks. No, that's not. No, what we should be doing is retaining our clients. How do we improve the program? So I, I met with our team this morning to say, guys, what do we need to improve the program? And we've got some ideas, some suggestions have been shared already. There's some more suggestions uh, this uh, on Thursday with Kieran um, around this stuff. But look at that. Do a year on that. I don't want to do it. It's well <laughs> over $300,000. Go on. So that $300,000 we've lost in revenue is 150 grand worth of net of gross profit. That's and now, on. if you go circle back to our customer acquisition cost, yes, right. Now it goes even higher because we don't have that revenue anymore. So you take your client acquisition cost, your times. If let's say you lose half, you times your client acquisition cost by two. Then. Yeah, it's cheaper to keep them. Absolutely. <coughs> so super excited. Lots of great things. So it's actually. By the time you do this, is it worthwhile investing in getting our students to that next level and helping them with all this stuff? Yeah, of course. Sure is. In a heartbeat. Even with me on that? Mm -hmm. And it never used to be this way. I think as we got to a certain price point, we used to be at like 397 497 a month. We never had this. We had about 88% retention of all clients. As we've got higher and higher, we've got better caliber um, Cap it success in, but we've lost a lot more of the best mindset because it's just price wise is out of the out of the ballpark. And eventually we have to ask ourselves, you know, we can't have a price point. We can't sell high end lingerie and disposable in the same store. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. It's one or the other. That's simple. Super awesome. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. I didn't expect to go so long. I didn't realize it would go so long. But mm -hmm. It was, worth, it was worth the time, absolutely worth the time, because this is the heart of everything we teach, heart of pro CEO, heart of weekend with Colin. Gabby, watch me. I sit with a student with uh, Warren. Yeah. Uh, and I sat with Warren. I built this sitting at my kitchen counter. You know, Warren came over. It's like we were doing a weekend with him. I was like, what do you need to be cash flow? I don't know how to build it. Built the whole cash flow. Gave his, gave his financial statements within half an hour. Built him a cash flow. Hey? Yeah. I know he just said to me, he was like, holy frick, and he's been using it ever since. He's like, he swears by who we are. He's like, this is incredible. So let's just have more fun with it. My number one thing is, if you get someone on the phone, do your best to answer, to get these questions answered. Take some notes around it, what have you. More detailed notes, the better. You know, remember sign up systems, the one calls, the more, call, more information you put on there. Mm -hmm. You can definitely put too little, but you cannot put too much on all one calls. Um, the more you put on, the more we can understand what's happening. We can serve those clients. So if I have to ever phone them, like Colin, can you phone this client? I can log in, check sign-up systems, log into their profile, see what's being discussed, as opposed to you have to phone me and tell me because you haven't put it onto the system. 
One calls are critical, man, absolutely critical. Let's have a great, let's have a great week of you know, becoming seriously cash flow focused. And welcome to the cash flow center. And what is your name? It's a really cool, cool, cool.